Much like you, I'm sure, after a show, people hand me drugs, they hand me Adderall, they hand me weed, they hand me mushrooms. The so best. I best. have pockets full of drugs after shows, and it's great. And I go fly, <laughs> and I forget. I just put my shit through the, through the ringer, and I don't even notice. Oh, uh, yeah. I scream at TSA agents knowing I have weed <laughs> in my bag. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Ari Shafir's Skeptic Tank Podcast. My name is Ari Shafir, uh, coming to you live from Quito, Ecuador, to tell you about this episode. It's episode number 420, and I think, and I think you know what that's going to mean. We're going to talk about weed. We're going to talk about marijuana. It's a celebration of all things pot. That's right. So I don't know if you know this, but 420, I saw the number coming. I was like, oh, episode 420, I got to do something weed-related. I got to do something. 420 first became associated uh, with marijuana back in the 1920s, the early 1920s, uh, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, a group of 420 uh, white nationalists march into a black town on April 20th. And they said, we're here to kill you. We're here to kill all of you. And the black people, like, they met up in their church and they said, um, you know, in between song, they're very Baptist and very fun. They said, what are we going to do? And one of them was like, well, should we fight back? And they were like, nah, it's not so acceptable these days to fight with white people. So one of them was like, well, why don't we smoke them out? And everyone got quiet. Like, what do you mean? Like, let's give them our best shit. So that's what they did. They rolled blunts. They rolled the bless, best blunts you could find in 1920. And they gave 420 of them out to all the KKK members. And those KKK members were like, this ain't gonna stop us, but that is they smoked, and you know what it did? It didn't change their mind. It made them forget what they were even doing there. And they went home. That's right. So from then on, 420 became a sign of peace and marijuana. Um, so here's what I did today. I got a bunch of my friends, uh, and I got them just to talk about weed. That's it, why not? Oh, by the way, today's episode is brought to you by Typepack. Typepack, it's for when you wanna smoke, and you need to hold it somehow. They're available uh, in these big cases. You can see this on YouTube if you're watching on youtube.com slash Ari Shavir. Or these small cases, tight pack, um, not in there. But, you know, this is a single. So it's just roll a joint and it's fuck it. Oh, gone. I thought I had one in there. Hey! I did! But today we're smoking a new joint. We're not going to do an old one. It's going to go back in there. I had one of these, by the way. Me and Renazisi. Um... We're going to Yankee Stadium, the new Yankee Stadium for the first time. We're smoking out. It was one, it was so they have a single type pack, they have a, like a double, which holds two to three joints, and they have this, which will hold five. This is your fucking festival shit right here. By the way, type pack is not uh, paying me for this, but I will tell you, it's T I C H G H T P A C. Uh, you can get them on Amazon or you can get them at some dispensaries. They're great. Um, so I was closing one. Let's say it's like this, and it's bright green, and uh, we're smoking away from Yankee Stadium, and then some dude on a bike comes up, and he goes, uh, hey, be careful, there's a cop up there around that parking structure. We're like, all right, let's have a couple more hits, then we'll stop. Smoked one, put it away, so it's like this. Oh, shit. These things also really fucking protect you in, when it's cold or rainy. When you're done, you just put the weed in there, and the lack of oxygen makes it go out. I closed it. Like this, barely. As soon as I closed it, a cop was on me on a bike. It was like this. It was like, so I couldn't even put it away. I was like that. And he just goes, where is it? And I go, what? And he goes, where is it? I'm like, where's what? He goes, the weed. I smell it. And I'm fucking holding this shit like this. Bright green. And he goes, I smell it. I go, it's gone. And he goes, man, you got lucky. And he fucking biked away. Renazisi was over there calling, well... <laughs> He said he was calling 911. And it took on more meaning later. But uh, but yeah, I was like, and then I was like, whoa, almost got away with that. I love smoking at baseball games. I smoked it. I went to see a Red Sox Yankee game once. Went to Red Sox Stadium. They have a smoking section. Went to the very edge of it. Got there like an hour before. Just, go, <sighs> just fucking puffed one down as hard as I could. I mean, I smoked an entire joint in like 60 seconds. I got fucked up. 
All sorts of th things to do on marijuana. All sorts. See movies. Go to games. Watch UFC on edibles. So here's what I did. I got a bunch of my friends. In no order. Dan Soder, Tony Hinchcliffe, Adrian Apolucci, Mark Normand, Sal Volcano, Steve Renazzisi I got. Just to come in and tell your favorite memories. Sometimes they involved me. Sometimes they didn't. And then a couple of them got fucked up. I called Kurt Metzger, but he's such a fucking... He was like, oh, sorry, Ari, I recorded all of it on my end, but then I deleted it and, and, and emptied my trash. What a fucking fun conversation, too. I mean, I was stoned as fuck in Otavalo, in, in this mountain. It would have looked fucking cool. Um, and Kurt's breaking down how Gavin McGinnis is like the progenitor to Lena Dunham and how it's a direct lineage that way. And I was so fascinating on weed. It was just great pot talk that I would have just ended with. 30, 40 minutes of just the most interesting weed-related talk. But it's gone. Thanks, Kurt. Um, <laughs> he's still a good guy. I don't know. And then I was going to do uh, two more up there uh, in the mountains with Diaz, with Joey Diaz, and with Duncan Trussell. But my internet was so fucked. It was so fucked. Let's smoke a new joint for his fucking 420. It was so fucked I couldn't do it. So um, Duncan was kind enough to send me a video talking about one of his earliest weed memories. So that'll be in here. I hope you guys listen to this at 420. Or I hope you listen to it starting at 3, and right at 420, you light up. So it's a fun celebration, you guys. It's all things weed. I remember when I first started smoking. I mean, I first... First, first started smoking. Was like, I guess college a couple times. But then when I got to the comedy store, dude, Joe Rogan would come with weed. And it was just like, I'm, all I had in college was Kind Bud and Schwag. That was it for white people. Kind bud and swag. And Rogan would come with this weed that, that wealth and, and lack of caring could provide. And he would smoke me up. And I remember being, before I'd get high for three, four hours, this was five, six hours later, I'm still so high, I'm like, I can't drive home. And I would just be sitting there in the front patio just going like, get out of me. Get out of me. And it wouldn't. I started referring to him Referring to Joe Rogan as El Diablo. Because he peer pressured me into doing it. I mean, you know, I'm a grown up. Can't be peer pressured that much. But it was fucking nuts. And uh, when I really got into weed weed, I was with Joe Rogan and Eddie Bravo. And they were stopping by one of Eddie's students. He's a, a jiu-jitsu master. And uh, we were stopping by one of his students owning a dispensary. And what they did is, oh, dude, the dispensaries used to do this thing where you just go get your fucking free weed. If you get your license, you can just walk around to different dispensaries in L.A. It's probably too corporate now. And just get your weed. So you get a gr every time. Like, I'm new here. Like, here's a free gram. Or here's a free pipe. Or both. What a fucking fun time. So we went to this dispensary. This guy named Atari ran. Palestinian. Fuck. And, um, and he goes... Uh, so while we were there, it's Joe Rogan, this fucking celebrity from Fear Factor, Eddie Bravo, his instructor, and then me, just some guy. And, and uh, Atari goes, hey, get these two guys a care package, which means a bunch of weed. I had a little bit. I remember buying some from Rick Inger once, and I still had it a year later, a gram. I still had leftovers a year later. It's raining. Um, but anyway, so the guy behind the counter who's getting the care packages ready goes, should I get one for that guy too, to me? And this is a split second decision that changed my life. Atari looks at me and goes, uh, yeah, sure. So for the first time, I had about seven different grams on me in my apartment. And I could just smoke. I could just smoke different things whenever I wanted. And that's what I did. I just smoked different things whenever I wanted. And I got way into it. The Maui Wow is the first time I was like, oh, that shit's great. That gets me creative. Uh, other shit gave me the munchies. By the way, today's episode of Ari Shafir Skeptic is brought to you by Ecuadorian Chocolate. Ecuadorian chocolate, everybody. It's underrated, but it's among the best in the world. Fuck, that's good. Oh, that pineapple one's good. Oh. Maracuya and Minta. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's start the episode. We're going to go all the way around. We've got tons of weed-related sponsors today. And uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to interrupt as the podcast goes. It's a new thing where I'm not going to take breaks all the time in the middle of my intro. Instead, I'll just drop them in here or there. So uh, try to roll with them as best you can. So ladies and gentlemen, let's start the fucking episode. It's a celebration of all things weed. I would love if you, in your comments, would leave 
Favorite weed stories for yourself. Maybe the first time you got too high, the first time somebody fucking dosed you with too strong a weed. Red Band used to do that to me all the time. Couldn't even drive home. I'd fall asleep in the car on the way home. At a red light. Safety first. But still fall asleep in the car. So leave your best weed stories in the comment section of YouTube. And on April 20th, I'll do a Patreon and I'll read some of the best comments you guys leave in honor of marijuana on the April 20th Patreon. Patreon.com slash Ari Shafir. I'm doing good stuff over there. It's my wandering Jew plant I picked in the Amazon and I'm going to try to get home. It's been tough. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, could you believe it? 420 fucking episodes. Also, definitely sign up for my Patreon. Patreon.com slash Ari Shapir. <coughs> Let's see if I can French inhale. In the outro, we'll see if I can French inhale. Ladies and gentlemen, Ari Shapir Skeptic, episode 420. <coughs> Fuck. A pot of weed with Duncan Trussell, Sal Volcano, not Kurt Metzger. Yes, Mark Norman. Yes, Dan Soder. Yes, Tony Hinchcliffe. Yes, Adrian Apolucci. Steve Renazzisi, Sal Volcano, Duncan, Norman. Mark, no, Adrian, Tony, Soda, I don't know. Could have gotten more if I was home. It's going to be fucking great. Let's start. The episode. Skeptic, skeptic, skeptic. I'm just going to listen to you and not, and not have videos. Is that okay? Yeah, I don't care. Oh, we're actually smoking four. Okay, I've already done three of these and I haven't smoked at all. I'm in a parking lot of an Aki fucking supermarket in Ecuador. And so I'm going to fucking get a J out. We're going to do this fucking the right way, Dan. Do it the goddamn we're right way. The way our ancestors right did it, Ari. Should have put on one of these fucking ancestral masks. So if they call oh, me, they'd be like, like, cultural appropriation, they can't touch me. Yeah, they'd be like, you're one of us. Sorry, we thought a big <laughs> white guy was smoking. <laughs> one of us. Like, we've one never seen like us. us six to three before. <laughs> yeah. We've only ever gone to five to nine. Oh, my God. You must be recruited by the national basketball team if you're this tall. Dude, every time I try to like blend in here, they're like, it's not happening, dude. <laughs> you're bald. None of us are bald. You're fucking way high. Dude, that was always when I got really into reading about uh, Native American history. The thing I found the most fascinating was that Native Americans don't uh, have the gene for baldness. So the first time they saw male baldness was when the white man came west. And what? Yeah, they just call them bird people. <laughs> they call white guys bird men. <laughs> fucking dicks. I know. What fucking God. That's why we're on your dicks. land. You That's right. Fucking That's right. That's right. Cloth wearing I, cocky assholes. And I'd say you won on that transition. All you, you get smallpox. Well, think you about if you, if, if you really think about it, the most we fucked them was by raping their women and giving them the ball gene. Yeah. <laughs> barely like, anything. Dude, we and really did ball. win. That's nothing. We raped in high blood pressure. You're like, oh, God. <laughs> um, are you there? Dan. Yeah, I'm here. Are when did you start? God? Are you there, Vodka? I'm here. It's me, Chelsea. Hear? <laughs> do you, did you breathe that? Sorry. I just I'm read a big it hammer. Beat off to it. <laughs> oh, I was thinking, are you there, God? It's me. What's the Judy Bloom one? Yeah, are you, are you there, God? It's me, Helen? I don't know. Are you there? Margaret. Uh, some, Margaret, maybe. That's how dog. Porn dog, it's me there. It's blood puss. Are you there, God? It's me. It's me, blood puss. <laughs> Anthrax skin. Hey, um, I know you're a tight schedule, but anyway, you also have a tight dick. None yeah, of that yeah, has yeah, anything yeah, to do yeah. with this. Dan, how great is it to smoke weed and go see a movie? Oh my God, it is. It, well, it goes in stages because you do it when you first start smoking weed for pure enjoyment, and then it gets to the point where the weed rattles you. Everyone goes through like a once every four to eight years getting super rattled mentally by weed. And a lot of people that bucks them. <laughs> so when you meet friends that are like, I don't smoke weed anymore because I freaked out. You're like, yeah, I worked through it like an adult. Um, and then, but at, I remember being at the movies and being like, lo when Snatch came out in the theaters was uh, the Guy Ritchie movie was when I first started yep. sm smoking a lot of weed. I was like 15 or 16. That's when it was. Yeah, I was fifteen. Or, yeah, I was fourteen when I. I think I first started smoking weed when I was fourteen, and then fifteen was when I started getting like high all the time. That's crazy. You had access to weed at that age. I don't think it was. I had access to weed at like twelve. Was it not around you? Was it not in your middle school at all? In my 
Orthodox Jewish middle oh, school? No. Yeah, yeah no. Weed was not that up yeah, readily available. I was going to it some was fucking, a hard drug to me. <laughs> I was going to some public school where every kid had a lighter. What were you saying about getting rattled? That's an interesting thing about weed rattling you. Well, when you start smoking weed, it's it's very enjoyable, but then eventually you have to pay the tax, which is a mental freak out, <laughs> and you have to get rattled. Yeah. And it's just about, I've learned with all drugs, it's how do you return back to base camp? It's like uh, wow. it, with weed, you, you, you get anxiety, you get kind of panicky, and, and you can really freak out, and it can fuck you up. It could fuck you up. If, that's like, it's like an injury in, in football. If it, if it fucking, it can break you where you can't use your leg again, but then you can also break your leg where you're fine next season. So I've, I've learned, you know, in the fucking 22 years I've been smoking weed that you just kind of got to just shut it down, mellow out, and it will end. Sometimes you got to take like a, a week off, like a full yeah. week off or slow down. For, you're like, hey, this is getting out of control. Let me fucking chill for a minute. My biggest freak out ever on weed happened out of nowhere and fucking ear holed me. I was at the University of Arizona. I was fucking dead broke and my roommate sold weed so that would be the weed that i would smoke and he ended up getting like this was the year that he started selling weight and it was good weed it was like you know as we said in the early 2000s chronic uh it was kind, cro bud. kind bud chronic kind nugs yeah <laughs> we're just doing all the old things we didn't know what an indica or sativa was it was just like it's got red hairs and you're like what kind better swag yeah. those are the only choices <laughs> dude i used to have fucking pancake swag from this this uh one of the mexican djs at the radio station uh, yeah. i worked at would bring over these bushels of fucking swag weed and just give me pounds of it for free and it smelled like cologne and it would get and you it's free too so free and i'd smoke these big joints that would get me very very high and then very very sleepy so it was like that's a good t-shirt i don't i don't prefer swag but i'll take it if that's all you got dude <laughs> I will, like I will, i'll pick seeds and sticks out it's actually quite therapeutic to do that oh uh, yeah yeah but it's like bonsai garden of weed I got done with classes um, and I was off work for the day. And so I was like, oh, me and my buddy Mike were going to do gravity bong hits. And because, you know, that's the most. The last time I was on your podcast. Oh, dang, was, uh, oh, dang Mike. Mike? Yeah, yeah. No, it was Jersey Mike, actually. Oh, Jersey Mike. <laughs> you all had friends like that. And I swear to God, his name was Jersey Mike. This was before the subs place. So uh, last time I was on your podcast, or one of the last times I was on your podcast, I was talking about how I used to do knife hits. Knife in hits. Knife hits in Alaska. Alaska. I was just going over that. Yeah, and I would take knife hits. Well, we didn't, you know, knife hits outside of Alaska is a very methamphetamine feel. So we were doing, we were doing gravity bomb hits. Like, oh, are you guys not all in? Okay. No, you guys, are, you're, you're heating up knives and you're like, thumbs down? Is this a thumbs you down? Smoke and smoke they look up like, what the fuck are you Dude, doing? Dude, are you doing hard, are you turning weed into hard huh? drugs? But oh, uh, yeah. me and Jersey Mike were like, um, I think it was Mike. We we're like, well, let's just do gravity bong hits. So we made a gravity bong out of a two liter of soda. You know, we made the cap with the hole, then you fill it up with water, and then you let the water drain out, and it pulls the smoke, and then you fucking huff it in. So we did, I want to say three each. And Whoa. he was Whoa. like, Whoa, that's, yeah. that's too much. That's what, too is way to do what is a variable <laughs> offense? Three is so much. Three is so much, but we were like 20. I was like 20 years old and I was just like, I don't give a fuck. Fuck this. Let's let's get high as shit. We're in college <laughs> and I don't have work or, or school till tomorrow. And Mike left. Mike had to do something. He was a small time weed dealer, so he probably had to go sell a fucking gram or a half an eighth to a broke college student. So I was sitting in my apartment and I smoked a cigarette out on my balcony. And yeah. while I was smoking, I was like, do I have one of those? Pricklies, you know, like when you're in the desert, those little prickles, like little round. I, I forget. I don't know what they're actually. Oh yeah, names the little are. burrs. Burrs. Yeah, 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 yeah. A little burr, like a little tiny burr. A little Bill Burr. What are you doing so high, Dad? <laughs> it was a. I felt like there was a burr in my chest, like right in the middle of my chest, and I was like, "Oh, that's weird. It feels like it's stinging me." And then I was like, "Oh, it's not." I like. I, I changed my shirt. I was like, "This is weird. I don't know." And then. uh my left arm went numb 
And I was like, I was like, oh my oh, god, oh. what? Now this is what? 2003. This is 2003. I I maybe had a computer for two years at this time. Internet's still brand new to me. So yeah. I'm like, oh, I'll go to Web <laughs> WebMD. Now everyone knows. They're like, don't go to WebMD. It's just going to tell you. WebMD always leads to cancer. Yeah. Cancer or you're you're dead. You're the walking dead. And so I typed in chest pain, left arm numb. <laughs> oh, that's and Keith I, Robinson. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I dude, I immediately WebMD was like, You're having a heart attack, go to the emergency room. And I did. I No because I had dude. health insurance because I was still a college student under my mom. My mom's like health insurance covered me. And I called my drug dealer roommate, Amir, and I was like, Amir, I, I think I'm having a heart attack. And he was that Long Island Guido. And he's like, yeah, you having a heart attack? And I was like, I think, I don't know. And he's like, yeah, you should go to the hospital. And I was like, uh, I should. And I did. And I went to, by the way, this is 2003 Tucson, Arizona, where methamphetamines are like Hulkamania. It's running wild. <laughs> like everyone is doing fucking, like I, there was a stoplight by the radio station I worked at that I yeah. wouldn't stop at because there was like a uh, little <laughs> village of homeless people that lived in the runoff. And I would see them sometimes come out of the runoff and come to the street. And it's like, dude leaving the radio station at two in the morning. I'm not letting some meth head fucking rip into my Dodge Stratus. So, and then you stop there. They're like, that's a sign. We should be. That's a sign. Up. So I would just roll up to the light. And if there was no one around, I'd be like, fuck you. I'm going home. So I walk into the emergency room and it's packed. It's like university medical center. It's like a fucking major hospital. And I walk in and I like, I like go to the front and they're like, you're all right. And I'm like, I think I'm like grabbing my arm. I'm like, I think I'm having a heart attack. And they're like, you're having a heart attack. And they grab me. They're like, okay, you know, come with us. And they take me in and they do like, they're like taking my vitals and they're asking me, they're like, what are your symptoms? I'm like, my left arm's numb. I'm having chest pain. And they're like, okay. And then for sure. Just, you're, you're right. You're having a heart attack for sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And, yeah. And then I like tell her, I'm like, by the way, I'm really high. <laughs> I like said that to her. I just remember saying that, like, I'm going to come clean with you. I am really, really high. And she looks back at me and goes on cocaine. <laughs> like that, that's just how she phrased it. And I went, <laughs> No, 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 no. I took like three gravity bong hits. I took three gravity bong hits and I'm fucking stoned. And she's like, "On you, but you're on cocaine. And finally I'm like, no, no. Why are you doing this? And she's like, okay, like you're high on marijuana. Uh, let's see. So they give me an EKG machine. They give me an x-ray. Yeah. They do everything. And I'm going like, the biggest weed freak out I've ever had. Oh, plus if they don't take your word for it, when you're like, I'm high, they're like, nah, it's gotta be something else. And you're already yeah. paranoid. And, and I'm already paranoid and I'm already fucking spiraling. So I'm like, fuck. They're not listening to me. I'm gonna die while I'm hooked up to this because they left me alone and I was just like, oh my God. Oh my God. And like people are walking by. I'm like, is this how I die? Do I die at 20 years old? And I'm like, making all of these promises. I'm like, I'm not gonna get high ever again. I'm never gonna smoke cigarettes again. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna run. I'm gonna run every morning and I'm gonna fucking eat healthy and stop drinking soda. And they come back in and they're like, Mr. Soder, you blew a muscle in your sternum from coughing. They're like, that's... Really? Yeah, that's all it was. Wow. was I tore a muscle in wow. my sternum. Because during those gravity bong hits, I was like... Ah. You, know, oh you, know, you take gravity bong hits and you're like... Ah. I was just fucking hawking up a lung. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, you can't stop. Yeah, dude. It was like the ones where you're wheezing at the end where you're like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> like a dry heave. Crump, crump, yeah, crump. absolutely. <laughs> and and then like, like, by the way, while we took you, someone actually did die because we... Yeah, uh, a guy got stabbed in the neck job. by a meth head and we were busy dealing with your he lost his arm, pussy cool. ass. So I just remember that, them being like, your lung capacity is fine. You're... <laughs> you, you blew a muscle in your sternum, and I left the emergency room and just started smoking a cigarette. I just lit up a camel light on the walk. <laughs> just to, to, my buddy, 
because I drove. I drove to the hospital, so I was like, I oh, knew where yeah. I parked, and I was like, dude, I'm. I just remember pulling out that pack and being like, listen, man, that's when I thought I was having a heart attack. Fucking different. <laughs> right immediately, like, fuck you, God. Yeah, so, dude. I didn't I went mean to home, make that deal. And I went home and smoked a bowl and like got drunk. It was just fuck. That was a mess. That was a fucking mess. But that moment, I was like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for everything. <laughs> that's that's i mean that's the point where you should be like all right let me take a week off yeah yeah yeah, but yeah. No. whenever i used to take weeks off when i would visit my grandmother because i'd feel bad about getting high yeah and th the first time i would get high after a week or more i would feel a lot of anxiety like i shouldn't really? be doing, like i was oh. doing so well i didn't need weed why do i need weed and then by the second time i'm like oh yeah weed rules <laughs> it just chills you out. You're like, I shouldn't be, but what did I? What was I not should be doing again? I, I lived with Vecchi. I lived with Vecchion for fucking ten years, and yeah. he's like, "You're a person that needs to smoke weed." He just says that all the time. He's like, "You're a person where when you're not high, you're yeah. too energetic and defensive, and that's a bad really, dude." I get to say, to say every time I, the people are like, "You're high, aren't you?" I'm like, "I'm actually not." They only guess when I'm not high. Probably same as you, energetic and defensive, like a fucking pothead. I get super defensive, and I'm like energetic, and I'm running around. We're like, "Yeah," and then if I get high, they're like, "Oh, there he is," and I'm like, "Hey." Sometimes I'll freak out about <laughs> stuff. Get good. <laughs> most of the time, I'm like, "How you doing?" But I also think that I might be a person that, if I went to a different therapist or a different psychiatrist, would probably be on mood stabilizers. I wouldn't be surprised if yeah, but that's lame. Me. Yeah, that is lame. It's like if we could do the same thing, you should be prescribing me weed. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Now you know I'm staying in New Jersey, and it's fucking legal here. So oh, they have stores. Not no. yet. Not yet. But I'm very excited for that. Oh, that's nice. So you can smoke in the street. I think so. I think consumption is legal. Dude, well that is nice. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. It's pretty sweet because we grew up. What age that's did nice. you start? That's just smoking? a nice thing. I, st I smoked a couple times in college, and then it was like th two years into the comedy store, maybe three, when I started smoking. So I'm, I was 28, 29. But so I always had it legal. I I knew how to, like, I, I was raised smoking weed illegally. So I had all the tricks. Always like, cautious. Yeah. A, like a bounce sheet. Like I would always keep a box of bounce dryer sheets in my fucking oh my car. God. You ever leave them too close to the weed, and then it just like makes the weed smell, like taste the aftertaste is like bounce. Oh, yeah, yeah, dude, it was, it was a uh, when I got because I knew my parents were alcoholics. I was like, yeah. okay, I can't, I can't drink. But then I got really into weed when I was in high school, where it's like shotguns, blunts, like all that. Like, I built, we That's built our long. Yeah, dude, I was smoking like. I would work in high school to buy eighths. <laughs> I'd be like, all right, wow. I got 50 bucks. I can go buy an eighth. Wow, yeah, you couldn't even have the money. How'd you have the money? For? I didn't have the money when I was like a three-year comic. I had a, I had a job. High school? I had a job in high school and also our and buddy. No cost. I could I could say it right now because he's probably not a drug dealer anywhere, but our buddy, this kid Devin <laughs> that went to my high school was a full-on weed dealer by junior year, and he lived with an older lady. He was like 18. Dude, D yeah, dude, I don't want, I almost said his last name, but Devin was like, he had a mustache and he sold weed and it was in this townhome complex <laughs> by my house and you would like literally wait in line at Devin's apartment to buy weed from him. But the reason he was able to sell so much weed to high school kids was he would do grams for 20 bucks or for yeah. 25, you could do a, a half eighth, which is 1.5 grams. Wow. That's yeah. expensive. I know. And we just do it. Or it, it, like right. oh. first, like Damn. before Devin got into it, we would drive to Boulder. There was like a guy in Boulder that you could get really, really good weed from. That's such a crazy way to start smoking weed. I just went to stores. It, it, it's so different. You could just go to a store. It's just like, you know, what, one, maps. Of my, one of my favorite uh, embarrassing weed moments was when I moved to New York. I was 23 um, and I needed weed and I was staying in Hoboken. And my roommate who worked uh, on Wall Street was like, oh, there's this guy that sells really good weed. He does $20 grams. They come in their own, but you can only buy it in grams. You can't buy like a 3.5 eighth, which is stupid. Oh, you have yeah. to buy three grams for 60 waste bucks. Of waste of plastic. Waste of plastic. Well, he put them in these glass vials, these like oh. these glass vials that were evenly weighed out for a gram. 
and he worked at this parking garage and I was sleeping on my buddy's couch when I first moved out here. And I was like, I just got a job. I just got enough money to be like, yo, I'm going to buy an eighth for the apartment for a weekend so we can like smoke bowls. And I go to the parking garage where this dude works and I'm like still Colorado, Arizona, Dan, you know, I'm like, Hey, how are you? How you doing? <laughs> yeah. and it's, he's just like this Dominican 21 year old, you know, he's like, what's up? What's up dog? <laughs> just like not. You know, you talk just, different. Yeah. There's just no, there's zero Midwestern niceness in this guy. He's just like, what you need money? And I'm like, uh, I'm like, hi, can I get a uh, three grams? He's like, yeah, 60. And I have the 60. And I remember giving it to him and he goes and I have snow gloves on and he goes to give me the three vials and I drop two and they oh, break no. and oh, they no. break, and he just goes, man, and just walks away. And then I'm sitting there picking nugs up out of <laughs> snow and glass. Like, I think I got one vial, but oh, dude, it was so embarrassing. <laughs> oh, fuck. It was so embarrassing. <laughs> He's like, you just ruined my spot. I'm out of yeah, here. Dude, he Enjoy that. From By the like way, that. no refund. You're out of the store. Exactly. He walked away from me like I shit my pants. He was like, oh, oh, man. And <laughs> he was, was like, like, you suck. What the fuck is wrong with you, dude? You fucking suck. <laughs> it's completely the energy he had the entire time. He's like, you're a fucking dork. And I was like, oh, God. Oh, I need my, my little. Oh, I need my. <laughs> he's probably like, I hate this job. These fucking losers are coming to me. Yeah. God he's damn like, it. Came in. These, these white boys can't even handle a handoff. <laughs> uh, well, thanks, Dan. I appreciate it. That was fucking hilarious. It's fun smoking a bowl with you. But Dan, is, you guys can all hear? I gotta believe. You can yeah, all but, hear on the bonfire. Yes. Monday through Thursday. Faction Talk Radio 103. Fa- Faction Talk Warrior 103. I got to believe that you can do that right now. And check out the podcast, The Bonfire. And also check out the podcast, Sixth and Jump. We're going to be back, baby. We got to (laughs) cut to season three. We got some work to catch up on. (laughs) Uh, Dan, that was great. That was hilarious, man. Dude, thanks. You're the best. That was fun. That was a lot of fun. Skeptic, 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 skeptic. Hi, I'm Ari Shafir. Here to talk to you about CushyDreams.com. Cushy Dreams offers a wide variety of smokable CBD. And I found that if you rub some on your cock, it can fuck hardcore all fucking night. I'm killing this pussy. I'm fucking killing it. Ugh. Thank you, Cushy Dreams, for allowing my dream of crushing pussy to come true. Ugh. Most people just smoke it, but you're a fucking fool. Take that cum, bitch. Oh, take that! <laughs> I'm hard again. Oh yeah! Take that fucking cum! Thank you, Cushy Dreams. Ugh. Oh, CushyDreams.com. Ugh. I swear by it. Tony Hinchcliffe, thanks for being here. Straight from fucking Miami, one of the worst cities, not just in America but in the world. It's good to be here. I'm glad uh, glad you uh, <laughs> glad you uh, made me feel so good about the city that I'm in right now. I was actually enjoying myself until you said that. <laughs> I mean, the beach is okay. South Beach is just it's it's a city known for black dudes hollering at white chicks. Yeah, and Cubans. They are a wild, wild race. They really, they really are. They really are, and they're in their environment there, so they're just as free as they're ever going to be. There's not even a little bit of like, ah, let's blend in. Yeah, not great audience members either. They respond to rhetorical questions and things like that. And, uh, <laughs> you, know, you know, they really give their own perspective after each joke when they get a chance to. I remember the first time I was there, uh, the, everyone was yelling in different spots of the room. just like, And then the, the, the um, manager of the Miami, the old Miami Improv went and quieted one table. I'm like, what's that going to do? There's fucking nine feet high different. <laughs> uh, so, Tony, let's talk about weed for a second for my 420th yeah. episode. You and I have smoked many times together. You're one of the, yep. you one of probably this wait the second guy that I've gotten on this podcast who has smoked and had that moment where he has smoked with an HIV positive <laughs> person and had to have that moment where you go, ooh, uh, too late, I'm too late. Yeah, yeah. Uh, again and again and again and again and again. 
over and over and over again. I'm like, well, I guess we really are going to find out if you can get HIV through smoking pot, because if you can, I'm going to catch it from this guy without a doubt. <laughs> One of my favorite things about smoking with Jeff Scott is we all have that moment and then seeing a new person have that moment and go, oh, uh. <laughs> you're like, okay, you can't transfer it that way. We would have already all been dead. <laughs> yeah, I've seen some, uh, I've seen some like uh, very famous comedians, uh, yeah. you know, they would pass them a joint or a bowl or something like that and i know for a fact some of these comedians and i don't want to name names because i don't want to make them seem ignorant or whatever but like you know i know for a fact they probably wouldn't <laughs> pass it to him if they knew we had hiv <laughs> i thought it's a residency he was like he didn't know he had hiv for like a year and so then he was like oh 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 i've done well too late <laughs> it's yeah. like whether well, i got it or not I said, Tony, when did you start smoking weed? How, like, what age were you when you started smoking? Jeez, I was in high school, early high school, so 15, 14, Damn. 15, right in there. Maybe even Damn. between the summer between eighth grade and freshman year was really a big one for me. So it was actually probably then, I think 14. Wow. And you told me about a, a, a specific strain of weed that's really not available, uh, nor should it be, anywhere else in the world. Yeah, uh, Youngstown, Youngstown Brown. The Youngstown Brown. Yeah, well, I was in Indonesia and I got what I, at the time, considered the worst weed in the world. And I say, editor's note, I have never tried the Youngstown Brown, so I'm not sure. Well, there is a catch with the Youngstown Brown. It looks like shit. There's seeds everywhere. But for some unexplainable reason, it gets you a type of high that is just crazy. And it's just like funny high. It's not like relaxing high you have to be around people and there has to be you know like laughs going on it's it is a specific type of sharp sativa ish weed if that makes sense yeah it does and and that actually reminds me of something maybe we should talk about just for a minute it's like the different when you get a new guy who hasn't smoked pot and they're like i don't like weed and everybody goes well what kind of weed have you smoked have you tried sativa have you tried indica and they all really do different things my favorite of the giggle weed is is Pete's OG Kush. Yep. Yep. It is the very best. And yeah, I've been looking for that since moving to Texas. What is the uh, selection like in Texas? It can't be like LA where you get to decide what you want. No, it sucks. It's not that great. It's like the guy sends me a menu every like, I don't know, I guess I need a new ounce like every two or three weeks or something like that. Menu is what you want. Yeah. There's four or five different kinds. This is a no brainer. I'll take the best one. I'll take the most expensive one. And so I got an ounce of that and it was just okay. Like it was just enough no. weed to, yeah, I mean, it's just, I guess it's good. How much? Uh, how much did it cost? Yeah. yeah. I think it was like uh, 230 or 240 or something like that. For an ounce. All, All right, right, that's not bad. bad. Yeah, but the point is, is like I got the best kind, and it was like the if I got it in L.A., I would have like sent it back. You would have returned it. That's one of the coolest things about dispensaries in L.A. They really are. You're like, hey man, this is come on, no, I'm a loyal customer, and this isn't doing it. And they will be like, okay, give back what you have. I was kidding. I've never actually done that, but you're Jewish, so you obviously like didn't. Get I, of, that. Course I have. Have. <laughs> of course I have. Of course I have. If you call that twenty seven percent, come on, dude. dude. And they're like, all right, all right, all right. Here's about two free grams for your troubles, and uh, and and we'll get you something else for, in place. It's this. wild in te in Texas. It's like starting all over again. It's so bizarre. It's literally like being in between California and Ohio. It really Damn. is. Weed weed wise and geographically. It's Austin, though, right? It's not like fucking El Paso or something. I know, but I don't think they're getting the the right shipments, man. I just don't. I don't know. I think things will probably maybe when uh, maybe when our buddy Pete gets his uh, gets his stuff going, maybe things will change. Maybe he'll swing the market to a better uh, uh, quality. Hopefully, right? hopefully, you got to catch up. If that if that's around, then everyone else will have to up their game. The what I, one cool thing about weed is the tolerance will adjust to the weed you're getting. Yeah, that's true. For you know example, I, mean? I, mm -hmm. I know that for a fact because I've been smoking this Texas weed for uh, a couple months now. And uh, a friend just sold us a, uh, a weed vape pen. We got a weed vape pen. We hit it. We got high as fuck. And so I bought a weed vape pen. And uh, this thing 
gets me stoned to the gills, like almost like a dangerously, <laughs> dangerously yeah. uh, calm, relaxed type of high to where I'm all pretty much lazy as shit when I'm smoking it. But it's at least hitting me. Whereas vape yeah. pen, I didn't really smoke vape pens much in LA because, uh, because why would I? Why would you? You have the best quality flower. I, 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 vape pens have always been to me like it was cool for a minute, and then when you smoke it too much, I get fucking cloudy all day. If that's my normal fucking, even when I'm not high, I'm just like I'm out of it. That they're putting some fucking chemicals in that, which is pretty good. Yeah, no doubt. And in vape pens, I go in and out of these phases. It's happened before. Like once a year, I'll fall in love with a vape pen for like a month. And then by the end of the month, I realize that I haven't written a joke or come up with anything funny in two or three weeks. And I'll just stop. Yeah. Yeah. Like you come out of it, you're like, man, you're fine with it. And so you like come out for a second. You're like, oh shit, I'm a loser. And then you go right back in. You're like, I better stop. hundred percent. Can you drive okay when you're high? hundred percent. hundred percent. I drove from uh, L- LA to Austin and I was so, stone the whole time i mean a crazy <laughs> amount of high and i can it, it would have been such a miserable drive without it but instead it was so much fun it makes the boring you know it makes boring views beautiful you're like wow Dude, that's look the at best that mountain that's, over there. that's the best thing about the the traffic in la it's just like everybody's got multiple types of weed in their car so when you hit traffic you're like whatever radio's on hell yeah music's yeah. playing music's better the views better the weather's better everything oh, feels yeah. nice that must have been gorgeous driving through through America with with fucking you you drove. That's great with fucking high shit. Listen to tunes. That's it. The sound system in my car was lovely. Is lovely. So I mean, I had everything I needed. It was actually quite quite fun, quite enjoyable. Dude, when I uh, when I moved to California, I drove from Maryland, and uh, I I met my friend who used to live in Maryland, and he was living in Florida um right where you are now and um and we met like in nashville we each took a car he got i didn't get high back then he got super fucking stoned the whole way and drove the speed limit and i drove you know 15 miles over the speed limit and then i'd find a place and he'd catch up um to stop for the night so i was ahead of him when you get into california over those mountains and you just come into california and they were stopping every car to look for fruits and vegetables. <laughs> and I was like, called them as soon as I got through there. I'm like, hey, dude, open up your fucking windows right now. <laughs> you are going straight to cops. <laughs> and he was like, afterwards, he's like, dude, thank you for that call. I was fucked. They stopped you fucking eight feet out. Wow. That yeah. is hilarious. Yeah. yeah. I'm always scared pulling up to those things. They have, you know, they have those little immigration checkpoints on the way here coming through El Paso and all that. But I'm so white, you know. It's such, yeah, you're, you're just, just like, like, yeah. You just show your face, you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, do, a, do a weird, up. do an extra, extra white thing, like wave with my hands <laughs> side to side. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, oh, 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 hello, just me, just the white guy. <laughs> <laughs> All blue lives matter. Yeah, uh. so they, I, I waved so they could see the whitest part of my hand. <laughs> That's right. Uh, uh, are there? Can you? How's your stand up high? Uh, it's the it's the huge. I mean, that's that's normally how I uh, I do it. I don't get too high before. I mean, obviously I have, but uh, I like to take like a couple hits. And you know, that's another thing. Going back to Jeff Scott, it's like you know that was part of the routine back back in the day. It was like him. take two or three hits maybe i mean i would go out oftentimes in the back alleyway and when i say often i actually mean like all the time like 100 percent of the time <laughs> yeah, i would go to the back that alleyway that. Nothing and, I mentioned, yeah. and even if there's 40 people out there in the in sacred ground i would light up a joint i would take two or three hits to myself i'd put it out and then i'd leave and people i could tell people sometimes people would be like hey why uh you're not going to pass that thing? And I'm like, no, I'm not going to pass it. I don't know any of you. I don't know any of you. Why are any of you here? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then after my set, I would go back and I'd smoke the rest of it with Jeff or just smoke with Jeff and, you know. How um how frustrating is this? Because you remember the days of smoking in other parts of the comic store. That when they got corporate, they eventually shut down. Which I, The way Edgar says it, he goes, Ari, it was already ruined. There were too many people we didn't know in there. But yeah. 
What is that feeling when you walk back to sacred ground? Because it's one exit, one at same exit and entrance. And you go out, you can't really see who's there until you take three steps out there and you look around and you don't know anybody or they're all fucking chuds. And you're like, fuck, I either got to tell these people I don't want to talk to them by leaving. Uh, or I don't, what do you do? In the beginning, you know, when it first started, I would be nice. You know what I mean? I wanted them to enjoy the back alleyway, sort of like how I did when I first found it. But uh, but tor- but towards the end there, I mean, it was just chaos. Roast battle on Tuesdays and ki- even Kill Tony on Mondays. You know, yeah. people would migrate back there that just didn't belong back there. And I was never that way with it. And then I thought of it one day and I'm like, that's not how I ever treated it. Like I, even as like an employee, wouldn't yeah. when I first started there, I was like, I'm not gonna bother these guys. You know, you remember all those guys, and they were like, Yeah, yeah. You, you you the, the big time comics are smoking. I'm like, That's something I don't know. No way, no way. If I get invited, I'll be quiet, but no way am I going there 100%. And I think that's the ultimate difference maker. Things like that, like, I, I look for people that are like that sometimes now because it sa- really says something about the overall quality and their like endure, like the length of time they're gonna be around. If you recognize that other people exist and, and there's places in the world that you don't know, ugh, yeah. Right. There's there's nothing more, more annoying than someone trying to network in stand-up comedy. The only thing more annoying than that is when they're trying to network while you're getting stoned. <laughs> yeah, it's like, dude, you want to be at some point like, huh, huh, and you want to be like, hey, man, I, I, can you just cool it for a little bit? <laughs> like, like, it's just like, God damn. Yeah, this is doing the opposite effect of what you're hoping it's going to do. I'm, I'm starting to not like you because. Yeah. Dude, I yelled at someone at the cellar. It was some new comic, and he came in. He was, like, drunk, and he was like, oh, hey, what's, can I talk to you for a minute? I'm like, okay. And then he's like, do you have any advice for, like, how do I get up here? I'm like, oh, dude, it's way too soon for you. You shouldn't even be here. Like, I'm telling you, I'm going to give you the most sympathetic answer. You're drunk. You shouldn't be here. You're making a first impression. You should get out of here. And he goes, okay. I'm like, I'm telling you, man, for real. And then he started to leave and comes back. And then he was, and I always told him, I was like, dude, you got to get the fuck out of here. So I'm bothering other people. And then I'm like, get out of here. And then somebody's like, can I just get advice? I'm like, I'm giving you advice. Get the fuck out of here. I'm telling you, you're ruining it for yourself. In 10 years, you're going to be embarrassed about this. Yep. hundred percent. No doubt about it. So many people at the comedy store were like that, especially towards, you know, this boom towards the end of uh, the tur- during the start of the pandemic. It just became so casual. Yeah. And the weird thing is weed's more legal than ever. So just go smoke in the front. Yeah. Yeah. They literally can. It's so funny. And I've had so many people, you know, ask me that, like, you know, where's a good, hey, Tony, you know, we came here, we drove all the way from Detroit to be here. Where, where can we smoke? It's like on the sidewalk. Go, go, go where you came from. They'll let you back in. Like go smoke and come back. You can say wherever you smoke a cigarette. Do that. Like, yeah. What are, what are you talking about? Yeah. It's as legal as a cigarette. It's that's so, so fucking nuts. nuts. Mm-hmm. But cool. Yeah. 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 That's what I do on the road. People are like, where can we like? Can we smoke? I'm like, I don't know. Light it up. Can you? I don't, I don't have any. I just got here. Whole different thing in Texas, though, dude. I was smoking a joint by the river the other day. I was yeah. just, like, completely chilling. I'm like, this is incredible. It was, like, my first time next to the river. I'm like, this is so cool. And I'm, yeah. you know, to a few hits off a joint, and all of a sudden there's this fucking boat cop that pulls up out of nowhere. Like, I mean, I didn't even <laughs> see. I, I, he must have, like, cut his engine, like, a minute out and just rode the waves in. <laughs> <laughs> like it's a drive-by a boat yeah. drive-by <laughs> yeah and he tied his boat up and i was i i was i immediately got a hundred times more stoned like there's something about perhaps getting arrested for smoking pot that makes that increases the thc absorption levels <laughs> Killing yeah, yeah. 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 Because I don't know the laws in Texas. I don't know. Am I about to spend a night in jail? Is this a first cop got arrested, arrested by a boat cop? cop. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, why didn't you just walk away? Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, is this guy going to take me to the station on a fucking boat? This is going to be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Show up like the Sex Pistols did for the fucking awards. It's like taking you off a boat. That'd be so fucking cool. With a bunch of fucking people trying to come in from the Gulf. What? Yeah. And then it got even crazier because I'm watching him. Turns out he's not even looking at me. And he reaches into his boat and he pulled out a police bicycle and rode away. He like tied his boat up, 
He grabbed a police bicycle and drove off. <laughs> Guys, Guys I'm thinking, the, the biggest, biggest pussy, pussy on the, on the force. force. Exactly. I'm thinking to myself, like, you know, when you get stoned, sometimes you, like, feel bad for other people's lives. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm like, this yeah. guy needs a fucking police car so badly. Like, he's going to cry <laughs> his eyes out. When he gets promoted to police car, <laughs> you felt real, real empathy, empathy for this dude. For this dude. <laughs> like, totally, and I want the best for you. And you, and you ain't living it. I'm like, he can't take <laughs> anyone into the station. Not on a boat. Not on a bike. Yeah, yeah, how do you like hold on or get in the fucking handlebars? Like, like stand up behind me, holding with your feet in the fucking pegs. Yeah, you hold on to my waist. You're gonna be in big trouble when we get there. All right. Well, thanks, Tony. I just want to get a bunch of fucking stoners on this podcast to celebrate my 420th. Uh, everybody listen to Kill Tony. S- still out every Monday. Um, mm-hmm. YouTube, I assume, and and uh, some clips up there at least, yeah. right? And, uh, yeah. and yeah. audio. And, uh, yeah. yeah. I've been on a bunch come of times. Visit, come visit us in Austin soon and uh, and come do one. Yeah, for sure. When I get back. Yeah, I'll definitely awesome. make a trip to Austin to see everybody. All right, bud. Awesome. I'll talk to you later. Right, Thank you. Bye bye. Skeptics, 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 skeptics. Today's episode of Ari Shapiro Skeptic Tech was brought to you by Smoking in Nature. If you're out in nature, walking with your best friend. What can be better than lighting up a joint? Not much. Especially if it's a half smoked Ecuadorian joint that's probably been dipped in acid. <sighs> Don't forget. Views go better with marijuana. Now back to the episode. I'm doing a 420th episode. Adrian Apolucci, the Dark Queen. I'm doing a 420th episode of my podcast, and so I want to... uh, just do weed stories with a bunch of people. So I wanted you to tell, because that's the biggest freak out I've ever seen. That's the biggest what? Freak out I've ever seen. <laughs> I've never seen somebody get that paranoid. Well, I normally, I normally don't really smoke pot. So I've only smoked pot probably with you a couple of times since I was like 20. Wow. Yeah, I was surprised you let me get you high too. The first I was like, you're like, all right. Well, I think I started slow and we were having such, like, I remember we were in Austin when we were doing it, right? We were having so much fun. I just remember sitting at the table and we were laughing so much. And then, like, the third yeah. day, I think we just smoked a lot more. And you were, like, shape shifting before my eyes in that restaurant. And that's where I got. What, at the diner? Yeah, the diner we were at. And you were, you were asking me questions where I thought you were trying to trick me into stuff to use against me later. Like, you would ask me, which comics I wanted to die, and then... No, I... Okay, yes, but I didn't say die. It was First of all, it was just a topic of conversation. I know, but, like, if we were talking right now, I could answer that, but back then, I just kept saying, everything I say, he's going to remember this and use it against me. So I get that (laughs) now, but, like, high, I could not understand that. High went into conspiracy theories, and it was crazy. Okay, but also, for the record, it wasn't just who could die. It was also who could just be deleted, like, never had existed. But you also asked me who's like sh- who's like shows I don't like or acts, and I, it just felt like you were trying to catch me to to like say stuff about comics, and then later, yeah, then later you were gonna just be like, you'll never guess what Adrian said about you. That's what I thought you were wow. doing. So I was like, this seems this, uh, and like you, that's just your nature, though. It sort of is. Can I just tell you something you reminded me of when I was in yeshiva in in Israel in seminary. Me and my friend David and she went to other people's dorms and got them to talk shit about their roommates. Okay. And we and we had a hidden uh, tape recorder in our pockets. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it is seemed awful. like you were trying to get me to just say stuff about people I didn't like and people I comics yeah. I wish would die. And then like you were just going to go tell them all. Yeah. So then, what was your reaction to that? You so like, my reaction to here? that was like, okay, so Ari. I just thought if you were willing to do that, you might also just be... Then I thought you were trying to do that, but only to take away from the fact that you were going to kill me. I don't know. I looked at you at one point during during the meal, and I remember thinking, Ari's going to fucking murder me. 
And, I was, and then everything, what? so then everything kept lining up too. I was like, he has this, this house. It was just a realization that I'm going to murder you. Pit. He could actually kill me. Like it just, everything just seemed to line up. It did have a backyard. Why fire pit to it burn the body? Yes. I don't know, Ari. I wasn't thinking rationally, but it's just a place you could definitely the- saw a body, a backyard. You're not going to do that in a hotel. <laughs> I, I just, I just remember. I don't know. You, and then I, I don't know what you made saying, you start thinking of that. I, I don't know. I think. Uh, yeah, you got me on a loop of logic where I'm like, I'm not going to kill you. And you're like, but of course you would say that if you were going to kill me. And it, it just, I've, I couldn't at that point disagree. I'm like, yeah, of course I would say that if I was going to kill you, but I'm not. Okay, so let's get back yes. to this. Because here's what I said. Once you said, like, you're going to kill me, and I'm like, I'm not. I made a wrong turn and then had to go around, and you look like you fucking, it was over. I just remember we were going back. First of all, I don't even know exactly the road home. I just knew it looked more secluded, and we passed a hotel, and I was like, that's where you're going to kill me. And that's where you And I was like, should I jump out of the car right now? And you were like, no, don't jump out of the car. And I was like, that's what you would say, so I won't jump out of the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah, but that, I, kill you or not, I would definitely say don't jump right. out of the car. That's 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 crazy. But that would probably be your only chance of surviving it. You would have to get I out. I know, and then you moving. even said, like, because you're on the spectrum, that you couldn't even say to me, like, Adrian, I'm not going to do that. You were like, well, I guess that does make sense. <laughs> if I was, I if did, I was trying to up. kill you. You would see through it if I said no. I so, and then the night just got weirder and weirder. And then we were sitting back at the table, and we were talking for a while, and I would just, like, Look at you and freeze up and be like, oh, it's going to happen now. Oh, my God. Because <laughs> you would start to forget a little bit. Yeah, like, I guess I would. And then it would hit you. I guess you. I would forget that I thought you were going to kill me for a bit. And then I would just have fun for a couple minutes and then I'd go back to it. And I just like. It, it was like you, every time you, you like, you f- suddenly figured it all out. Yes. And then your face would just drop. I think that was the last time I smoked, to be honest. This a, do your. I, I want to see your face of what you would do, and I'll do my face of what I thought you did. Every okay, time. I'm just like, oh no, this is it. This is what you're gonna do. It. I know it. It's coming right now. <laughs> this is all I would see. I wish you could see me, but I'll see what it's up. It was just you were like laughing about something else. You forgot for a minute about your troubles and how I'm gonna kill you, and then you were like, oh, he's gonna kill me. I was like, oh, and of course he would say that. So we go like this. We go. <laughs> Yeah, I think at one point, though, didn't you think I was going to kill you? Because you were like, hey, I'm going to lock Yeah, oh, I locked my door that night. You were like, I'm locking my door. I'm going to go to sleep. And I was like, well, I'm not going to come near you. Yeah, because I was like, what if I could easily see you going to like, it's him or me. And I got to fucking, I'm not going down. I wouldn't do that. Because there was part of me. You were sure you wouldn't do it? I was sure I wouldn't do it because I knew that I was being a little overreactive, especially once we got back to the house and you didn't kill me at the hotel. I knew that, like, yeah. that would have been a good place to kill me. So then I was like... What was the hotel? We went to a hotel No, we passed... No, we were just driving home from that diner, I guess, and we passed the hotel, and I was like, this yeah. is a different way. Why are we going a different way home? And then <laughs> we got lost, but I took that as you pretending we got lost so you could murder me somewhere. I, but I do remember going, like, how would this assist me in murdering you? How would the wrong turn help I me in any way? in my head, you were... I was just like, all right, he's going to try and trick me, by saying like, oh, we just got lost here. Kind of like when you run out of gas somewhere. And you're like, oh, shit. Go out to the woods. Yeah. So like, I'm sure there's a gas station here in the woods somewhere. I just saw this fucking shitty yeah. hotel room. This shitty hotel. And I was like, this is where he's going to kill me. He doesn't want to even ruin the nice apartment. The nice <laughs> the house. The nice Airbnb yeah. that we got. With the fire pit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I did think it was such a great way to kill somebody because you had that house. I wasn't uh, thinking I mean, past that that much, though. It's just like, I don't know, it makes sense. That's the best feeling about drugs. Like, I can't explain it, but it for sure makes sense. I remember, it lines up. Yeah, I remember the night before. There was two nights we had a lot of fun, and then the night I thought you were going to kill me. But the two nights before, we were laughing so long. I was trying to look at the video of that girl that hates you with the arm, and we couldn't <laughs> yeah. find it. And I mean, <laughs> oh, yeah. we were trying to look at that for a while. And I remember uh, just laughing <laughs> so hard. I don't even know if we walked, ever found it, but we were just trying to find it. We were just talking like about it. Oh, my God. That was funny. I forgot about that. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> you got high like a new person, so it was so fun. It, yeah. It was, <laughs> like fun giggles. It was very fun, and then we were looking it up, and that made us laugh for so long. <laughs> but that was a good night, and then the, the bad night. But I think if you – I just started – 
piecing together things you were saying that I thought you could use against me. Right. So I think that's so I why I started being like, him. well, if he's going to do this, he's probably going to also kill me. I mean, it is a definite jump. It's a leap. It's we- Once you go down a bad road of paranoia, it's just a fucking whirlpool until you just keep getting sucked further down. It's nuts. I could see it happening to you, and I was just like laughing, but also like, I can't stop this. So I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I can't talk you out of it. It'd been funny though if I got into your room and murdered you. Yeah, I mean, I legitimately was like, "I'm going to bed. You're gonna be fine. Stop freaking out." And then I was like, I got up and I was like, "Uh, yeah, I gotta lock this door." I don't. I know. would have done that. I I wasn't a hundred percent sure you were gonna kill me. I think if I did, you could have gotten more sure as you let it fucking. No, I think whirl, as, it, as it, the night went on, it started to like. Linger. I think I also talked to Liz. Didn't I call Liz up and she convinced me you weren't going to kill me? I Mealy. Yeah, I think I called someone yeah. up. I think I called a friend up and they were like, okay, why would he take you on the road to kill you? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> like, right, you don't know. It doesn't, why would he do that? I know, but she, was, she convinced me that you were not going to murder me. So you really owe your life to her. Yeah, really, she's a hero, Liz Mealy. She is a hero. <laughs> she's a fucking hero. Maybe, actually, she's dyslexic. Maybe she was trying to have you kill me because she thought she was talking you into doing it. I don't think so. She's not like a shapeshifter uh, I don't think that's how like dyslexia you. works. Yeah. I, don't, I think you see stuff <laughs> backwards. You don't like try and get people to commit murder. Yeah, I just see like the evil side of things. Yeah. Um, and then I, I forget we were talking about Jewish people being lawyers. And that came uh-huh. up during it, too. Where I was like, this is you using your legal expertise. I don't know. It was just everything was jumbled. <laughs> As into, a Jew. I know, but everything I was just, just jumbled it. into one. <laughs> well, I had a really bad trip when I was a kid. I only So I probably only smoked uh, 10 times my whole life. The first time I had so much fun. The second time I had a worse trip than when I was with you. And I was 16. <laughs> me and all my friends were at my friend's house for like New Year's Hood rat friends? No. Yeah. Not that hood rat. But I... I got so high that I kept thinking, you ever see on a TV show where like you go into a coma and you have to wake yourself up so you don't die? That was my whole night. My whole night I was trying to wake myself up out of this coma so I didn't go into the light. Wow. I mean, I threw my, my friends were all crying at one point because they were like, should we take her to the hospital? They're like, we're 16, we're drunk, we're high. They're like, we're going to get in so much trouble. <laughs> like but it was, I mean, at one point one of my friends was like, holding me i mean everyone was crying we didn't know what was happening one of my friends was holding me and like rocking me while we we're crying and then i just thought i died and i was in my mother's arms like i mean the weirdest stuff so that's why i never smoked <laughs> after and then i i'm surprised you let me smoke you out you didn't you were like no and you're like no all right well i, I was like I'm surprised let me with see. that as a history i know i i guess i felt like we had so much fun for two nights and then that third night we just went nuts so it was like yeah. that when I was a kid was way worse than that. I remember throwing myself in the shower wow. and punching myself to wake myself out of this coma. Wow. So was, I thought I was swallowing my tongue. So yeah, I don't have Damn. a great relationship with pot. Yeah. Fun night though overall. Overall, it was a fun weekend. <laughs> so great yeah, shows. It was a fun weekend. Yeah, they were really great that weekend. Uh, that place was great. It's coming back though. Um yeah, Cap City's coming back. I'm pretty excited. We've got to go back. Maybe next year. Hopefully. Um, yeah. All right, Adrian. Thanks, man. That was fun. Um, yeah, you can press stop, but let me talk to you for another two okay. minutes. Oh, but let me just say this. Adrian Apolucci is fucking, you can hear her brand new album, Baby Skeletons, on my YouTube account fucking six weeks ago, and uh, or Spotify, or uh, or you can buy the album. Uh, but baby skeletons, you gotta listen to it. It's fucking great. Anyway. Oh wait, thanks to everyone that's uh, also donated. I'm writing back to everyone one at a time. So are you yeah, really? I'm writing back to every, writing them I'm all writing back? every single person back and thanking them. Like a bar mitzvah kid. Yeah, I stopped the video though, so there's no video of this. Okay. But I, I did want to thank everyone because I feel like people are probably like, this bitch didn't even write me back. It's like I am. I'm just going through every single one slowly. Wow, that's like a bar mitzvah kid. You got to write this thank you note. They were the worst part of getting all these presents. You get so much money in presents, and then you're like. Thank you for the kind present you brought. Much nachas to my family. Um, <laughs> you gotta send those dumb things. That's great that you're doing. That. I am, That's and good. if somebody writes something that is like personalized, I'll respond back to that. Like if somebody saw me open for you in Spokane or um, Charlotte or something, like I'll I'll write them back and make personal. If somebody just writes like funny stuff, I can't write that much back to that. I'll be like, hey, you know, follow me right. on YouTube or whatever. 
Were there a lot of people who had seen you a lot open of for me? Have seen you. Who then heard the uh, Yeah. Do you want me to uh, put the video back on? Because I turned the video off. Yeah, put shit. it back on. Yeah, put I it back on. Now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but like, um, uh, it's cool because I saw a couple of comments of like, oh, I was wondering who that was and I just lost her name and I don't I wanted to know who it was. A lot of people, I mean, first of all, you have very supportive fans. Um, well, the people that wrote yeah. to me are very supportive. The one, yeah. The ones that are left. The ones that are, I think you probably have a decent amount of followers. Um, <laughs> yeah, I have good friends. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people saw me. A lot of people saw me on the Jew tour. Somebody dubbed you the Jungle Jew, which I thought was fun. That's why I knew you were in the jungle. <laughs> Um, I like that. A lot of people told you to lick their balls, which I think if mm, you if coming. they left an address, you would do it, but they haven't. It's part of the hundred dollar Patreons tier. Well, nobody's left an address. Um, a couple of like <laughs> fuck Ari, um, but like yeah. still donated, which was nice. So that means they definitely still like you. Um, well, that's cool. A lot of people in Spokane. Spokane was a lot. Definitely Charlotte. Pittsburgh. You got some. You got some one dollar donations. I got some one dollar <laughs> donations from people who were like, "I am the poor people," which I thought was funny. Yeah. Which was also really nice. You got some good. I got one person yeah. that donated two hundred bucks. I was like, "Jesus, man! I should find out where this person lives and marry them." It it took you a while to write it. How long was that since the last thing you did? How long was that material? That, that album, album was from two thousand eighteen because I was going to tape a special. And then COVID hit, and I was like, well, I guess I'll put my album out now. Oh, right. So, God, I, what so I was going to do for the oh, special was take a good chunk of that and mix it with some newer stuff, and then that didn't happen. So, we'll see what happens yeah. now. We'll see when live stand comes back. But that's great. That's so cool that people reached out and had nice compliments and a shit. Lot. You have a lot of nice fans. And, and paid money. And you have a lot that's of Hispanic awesome. fans oh, yeah. that I, I thought it would just be white people. Yeah, I think they finally forgive me for the Amazing Racist, uh, oh, and now it's like flooding I don't think back anyone in. Anyone that's it's your the... fan would really be upset by that. Really? No, 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 no not for real. Yeah. It's it's just idiots. <laughs> it's just idiots. It is. So it's like all my fans are like, are you guys idiots? Oh, you guys are idiots. It is fun when somebody the other people. gets re, I guess, introduced to that or sees it for the first time and then they're upset. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're still getting mad about it, it's so fucking good. If you're still getting mad about it, uh, I think somebody also donated like and was like, "Fuck Ari for making that joke about Kobe," but also still donated. <laughs> so like, it's nice that they can just compartmentalize stuff too. That is nice. nice. That's what you want to do in life. Yeah. So thank you guys. Hey, you for cut me off, but that's still a nice, listening. nice Mercedes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All right, Age. Thanks, man. It's nice talking to you. Skeptic, skeptic. Today's episode of Ari Shafir's Skeptic Tank is brought to you by Gravity Bongs. Pipes are confusing and often dangerous, many times leading to unnecessary blindings. <laughs> Who doesn't hate being past a joint that's covered in disgusting saliva? By using supplies found in most bathrooms and many, many dumpsters across the nation, you can make yourself your own gravity bong. Simply light the marijuana. As you slowly pull the gravity bong out of your bathtub or sink full of dirty water, filling the chamber full of delicious, beautiful, high-inducing marijuana smoke. After that, it's yours to enjoy. Gravity bongs. They're still big in central Washington state. Mark fucking Norman, who I have smoked weed with or not? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Many times. I mean, we did we shrooms. Have to have, right? We did shrooms together at, uh, at that ski trip in Utah. Oh, yeah. You can't do shrooms without weed. Yeah. It's like the, the universal donor. It, it just goes perfect. Yeah. Um, when did you, do you remember when you first started smoking? Yeah, I remember the first time. I'm not a big smoker. I, I'm a lightweight. Every time, I hit well, a, yeah. every time I hit a joint, I immediately go, that was a mistake. Like, right when it hits me. <laughs> every single time. I'm one of these, it's got to be a perfect scenario. Like, the way women talk about banging a guy, I got to be that way with weed. Like, I need a candle lit. I need the door locked. I need to know you for three to years. So... Yeah, I'm not uh, not good with it, but I remember my just, first initial ever virgin hymen popping time. My friend, yeah. my friend Phil was a big pothead. He was like my my best bud, skateboard bud. He was a huge weed guy. Had a horrible childhood and family life, so he was a big meth head and coke guy. But he's like, we get drunk together all the time. I'm getting you to get high, and I was probably 15. We drove into a parking lot. We were the only people in there. I, Fifteen. I smoked, and I was out of my mind for like nine hours. I couldn't sleep. It was hell. 
Dude, that first time, it lasts so fucking long. And you are kind of a lightweight, not in a bad way, but you're usually like, a, I'll have two hits. I'm good. Yeah. You guys keep smoking. Uh, you know, you at least you know your place. It's like trying to keep up with alcohol with Bert. You're like, ah, you, you keep drinking. I'm, exactly. I'm pretty drunk. But like uh, that first, when you first start smoking, it just like won't leave you. Yeah, yeah it was a nightmare. And you had to do that thing where you go back <laughs> to your house and you creek up the stairs. Your mom's like, you hungry? You're like, ah, you just run up the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> in, in ways you could never imagine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you just lay under the covers and have every horrible thought on the planet. Uh, what if I die? Uh, nobody likes me. I'm never going to be anything. Uh. You're an idiot. You know, uh, so and I, I just go into myself and it's never good. It's never drunk. I'm having fun. Is, I'm laughing. I'm, I'm, I got you in a headlock. Yeah. This is the opposite. Is that what they mean by paranoia when you start thinking like nobody likes me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All that stuff. All that. That's my number when one. When I heard about paranoia, I used to think that meant like people are coming to get me. Mm. But then I realized, oh no, paranoia is just like having thoughts that like aren't real. I don't even know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, do you have, I mean, you've, you've been smoking for so long that you, you probably have worked out all the kinks. Like if I'm high and there's a knock at the door or my buzzer goes off, oh, I'll, I'll call the police. <laughs> <laughs> like good fellas when the helicopter's outside yes. and he goes, that's for me. That's for sure yeah, for me. I'm always looking up, looking yeah. out the window. Got the one blind going down. I, I can't handle it. And the phone rings. I'm like, ah, I'm in trouble. Who is it? You know, I, I can't even, I can't even live. Dude, I remember I started drinking coffee, but I remember when I hated the taste of coffee and, and, and there was finally a time when I realized that I was accepting of it. When someone at the ice house, a waitress had these chocolate covered coffee beans. And she was like, have these. I'm like, no, I don't like coffee. And she goes, no, you'll like this. It's chocolate-covered coffee beans. And I was like, uh, okay. And I ate it. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I don't like the taste of this. Mm. And then finally it was like, you guys think because you like it, I'm also going to like it. But I know myself. Right. What is it about those people who are like, I'm getting you high. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be. <laughs> well, it's it's everything. Everything's like that because my, my, my girl is like that. She's like, you want to have a drink? I'm like, I'm good. I'm trying to cut back. I went on a bender. And she's like. Well, I don't want to have a drink alone. And it's the same thing with weed. You don't want to be the one weirdo smoking and being high and baked in the corner while everybody else is, you know, chit-chatting. But it just feels better. It's it's an insecurity. Yeah, that's what it is. It's also like uh, when, when pill poppers are like, you got to do a pill with me. Yeah. It's like, just fucking do it, dude. Yeah. Um, do you remember before you started smoking what you thought of weed? Because I thought it was an, a drug, an evil drug. Yeah, well, also, yeah, we're we're a little, we're all, I'm, you know, my late 30s here, so weed used to be weed, you know, if you heard like, oh, this guy got popped for weed, you're like, oh, he's an addict, he's going to jail, he had narcotics, <laughs> Yeah, you know, that's and nuts. now there's weed stores next to cupcake shops, there's weed gummy bears, it's, it's, it's so uh, accessible now that like, weed, I'm like, ah, weed, if, my, if I catch my kid smoking weed, I'm gonna go, oh, good. That's fine. I love that it's become way more legal, but the negative is it's lost its outlaw feel. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I remember during Katrina, the city was, you know, martial law. People are shooting each other. Everybody's going down Broadway on a canoe and people are just smoking joints. And there was, even though the city was ruined, uh, people are dead. There was this weird freedom and like relief to just being able to smoke weed in, in the South openly. Yeah, now it's just not illegal. Even people are like, oh, you better be careful and so-and-so. I'm like, no, it's actually fully legal. Yeah. So you don't have to be careful. This, this <laughs> is how you know weed isn't that old. bad. I travel all the time for comedy, and much like you, I'm sure, after a show, people hand me drugs, they hand me Adderall, they hand me weed, they hand me mushrooms. It's the so best. I best. have pockets full of drugs after shows, and it's great. And I go fly, and I forget. I just put my shit through the through the ringer, and I don't even notice. Oh uh, yeah, I scream at TSA agents, knowing I have weed in my bag. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, just like painting myself in a corner. But it doesn't matter. It's so not bad. Exactly. Then you get you get to you know Albuquerque. You're like, oh shit, I had an eighth of a uh, kind bud in my my jacket pocket this whole time. Do you fly home with it? I always fly home with it. I don't fly places with it, but I'll fly home with it oh, to New York, not to L.A. Always. And I, I, I even forget. Like, I don't even think about it. It's not like, oh, shit, I got that, that eighth in my pocket. I just forget. And, and I get to Newark, and I'm like, oh, yeah, look at that. Sativa. Yeah. <laughs> That's how little it matters now. Yeah. It's, do you, it's uh, nice. When you, can when you can control your levels, like you, when you do get that perfect, like, Okay, I'll have one and a half hits, you know, whatever. You because sometimes it's way stronger than other times. But when you get that perfect level, like, how fun is weed? Yeah, the giggles and the 
That's true. Three beers in, maybe two cocktails in with that just the right amount of weed. It just pushes you over that edge and you're so focused and high and loopy and you're not hitting the paranoia yet. That's that's a great moment. Dude, I was drinking at a, at a, a karaoke party and at the I think the Brass Monkey in Koreatown and I was I got too drunk. It was a while ago and I was like, I gotta go outside for some fresh air. And then I went out there and I was like, while I'm out here, I may as well smoke a cigarette, which was just a mistake. It's the lack of fresh air, a cigarette. And then as soon as I smoked it, it was just like started throwing up. It's like sometimes it's cigarettes, uh, weed could do that too. But if you get a perfect one where you have like two, three beers and then you're like, let me have a cigarette, it just cuts it a little higher. Uh-huh. And then you get like, yeah, weed can do that too. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, have you ever been, they say you can't OD on weed, you can't die from weed. That's what you hear a million times. But I feel like I've OD'd on weed. I didn't die, but I could have been hospitalized. Right. Yeah, like the OD is not is not like you, you won't die, yeah. but you can still have an overdose. Yes, Exactly. It's not the movie heroin foaming at the mouth thing with the stab through the needle. It's just like I was I took a bunch of edibles because of the comedy store. I did the the, the Tripoli show and they give you just a like a grab bag full of C B D pills, <laughs> weed, yeah. shake, whatever the hell it is, cookies. <laughs> so I was I had a I had a big uh, pitch meeting in LA. That's what I was doing in LA. I was pitching and it was the first time I'd ever come close to selling a TV show. I had a production company, but Lionsgate was behind it. And so they flew me out first class, they put me in this nice hotel, and I couldn't believe it. I was like, Oh my god, this is incredible. And I feel like a winner. Yeah, I might actually sell this thing. I've never been flown out before. It was all crazy. So I do this sto- the show at the comedy store, but I tell Tripoli, I'm like, look, I can't smoke weed because I got I to gotta get some sleep. I got three pitches tomorrow. <laughs> it's like a challenge to people. Yeah, yeah, I got three pitches. I got Netflix. I got Amazon. I got Apple TV. This is the- I'm in the big leagues, so I'll take some CBD because I can't sleep, but I know weed. He goes, oh, yeah, there's a, there's a ton of, there's a vial of just CBD. And I go, great. I chug the whole thing, and I go to bed, turn the lights out. I try to be a good boy. It's probably midnight by... 1.30 a.m., I wake up, and I feel like I'm vertical, like I'm laying in the bed vertically. <laughs> the, the room is spinning. I couldn't. The floor was like I looked over the down the bed. The floor was a million miles away. I mean, I was on the moon. It was a nightmare. I overdosed. I, I was looking in the mirror of the bathroom. I crawled into the bathroom. The mirror, I looked like, you know, uh, that monk painting where he's screaming, you know, what is it, Van Gogh? And... I, yeah. I just hugged the, the leg of a chair for like six hours, and eventually the sun came up, and I called my my agent. I said, I can't go to the pitch. He's like, you're going to the pitch. I said, I can't. Uh, and he, he showed up at the hotel, and he's shaking me. He's like, you're going to this thing. I'm like, look at me. Look at me. I can't. And I, I had to skip it. Oh, no. I couldn't do it, man. I, could, I couldn't even stand. I couldn't literally couldn't stand up. It was too much. Dude, all the people who are like, I'm going to fuck you up. I'm going to get you high. They don't see the repercussions yeah. of, fuck, of what's yes. going to be. Like I didn't need this. Exactly, it was a nightmare. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. It was hell on earth. Uh, I just couldn't. The room wouldn't stop moving. I couldn't stop having thoughts. I could. I would. I would have a thought about a thought about a thought. You get in these wormholes and. Oh, uh, it, it. Oh yeah. It, oh, you're reminding me about early high, where it's so, you, yeah, you get down these worm, and you wish you could write it all down, but the thoughts are going so fucking fast yes. from one thing to the next, and you're having these beautiful amazing realizations but it's just gone instantly gone while you're on to the next thing yeah completely completely you try you can't grasp anything it's it just keeps floating away it's like fog you try to grab it and oh man it was it took like a day and a half to get back to normal (laughs) sorry about the pitch but that's so fucking funny (laughs) It it was looking back it was hilarious but my my agent was furious and then, like two weeks later, we rescheduled. I had to fly back out there, and then nobody bought it. Do you ever do? You ever do clandestine in Toronto? No, what's uh, the that? Comedy Underground. It's a pot room. Ah, uh, maybe. Um, but speaking of ODs, yeah, it was great. It was in the back of a pipe shop. It closed down now. Sadly, oh, I did it was do one that. Of my favorite. That was great. It had a big weed leaf on the wall. Yeah, that was fun. It was great. I always try to get uh, Just for Laughs 2042 to like include that place in their thing, but they were like, eh, yeah. it's semi-legal. And I'm like, ah, you should still. Anyway, once every third show there, somebody greened out, which is just like, I guess, lack of oxygen. I didn't think it was possible, and then they'll just like pa- just collapse. And fall and fall unconscious on the floor, and they were like, are "They the first time I saw, it, I was like, are they okay? Do they need help?'" Like, "No, we just gotta drag them outside. They'll just breathe some air for ten minutes, and we'll pull them back in." Yeah, 
And it was like, that seems dangerous. I know, because what, what do you do? You, you can't drive on that. Like, you just got to put somebody in an Uber and hope they make it home. Oh, that reminds me. I got to fucking, the next person I have on this montage, I got to talk about driving high. That's a good thing to talk about. Oh. Have you ever? Dude, I remember one time me and my it, friends in college, we all got high and went and saw the Hulk at the movie theaters. And I was driving and I couldn't park the car because it was a full parking lot. And there was one spot open <laughs> yeah. and I was doing the back, back out, try again, back out. And we missed the movie. <laughs> Just parking. I couldn't, it's like the easiest thing. Like, it's not right. Hold on. I got to get it. I couldn't do <laughs> nobody it. Nobody could help you. I had a guy. I had <laughs> The other high friend was in the, he was outside going, bring it back. I cut it, cut it, cut it. I mean, it was literally a standard parking <laughs> spot. And I couldn't do it. It makes you a retard. Yeah. The easiest fucking task I is just do it. parking in a spot that's lined for parking. Yeah. And it's just like, I don't know how to do this anymore. Yeah, I couldn't do it. Uh. It was too much. And we drove home. But you know, we had more fun trying to park and laughing and, and making fun of me than we probably would have at the movie. Dude, the laughs on weed are, are some of the best laughs. Yeah. It's just like an unbelievable level of, of humor and just like... I mean, I get that. I can't even get there that that many anymore. That's why I envy you, like lightweights, because you're like, oh, you can still get fucked up in a fun way. I guess I, I've just I got to learn how to you know control it more because uh, I always do too much or too little, then I overdo it, then I'm paranoid. I don't know. I got to work yeah. on it. And the thing is, they tell you like, well, I get paranoid. Oh, you need to do Indica or you need to Steve. It's like, yeah, but guess what? Somebody's just handing me a joint. Yes. It's not like I get to like, what kind is that? And, and act like a fucking ass. They just go, hey, you want this? So it's like, it's not like, it's not like you decide exactly what kind you have or right. what. That's not the reality. Right. Go to a dispensary maybe, but not in, not in real life. Yeah. It's like handing somebody a glass of Natty Light and then a glass of vodka and they go, oh, it's the same. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, do you want, al you, you have alcohol? Here's some alcohol. Yeah. Is that grain or is that a fucking <laughs> beer? Like there's a big difference. Of course. Of course. I mean, I yeah. like, I yeah. drink a, maybe a cocktail every other night and I had a, a wild turkey 101. Somebody sent me a bottle. I was like, ah, oh, it's a whiskey, whatever. I was fucked up after two because <laughs> it's 101. You got to remember that. 101. I forgot about that from college. 101 was like, it was like this mythical yeah. thing that you're like, <laughs> what? Yeah. It's 101 proof. Yes. We, we all act yeah. like we know what the proof thing. Oh, well, pro, 101 proof. Oh, yeah. I don't know what the hell proof is. <laughs> well, it's like, is that more than 100% alcohol? Yeah. What does that mean? <laughs> right. Uh, all right, Marky. Oh. Uh, well, oh, so Mark obviously has a podcast called Tuesdays of Stories, a, a fucking special right now called Out to Lunch that's on YouTube, and a new podcast. Yes. Which I think I did the outro for the podcast that you and I did on the in the car that's coming out soon, but I said the wrong name. But, oh, um, yeah. Because you changed the name, it's, but like, we, what's what's the name of it? You and Sam Morell just haven't. It's Sam Morell. It's called We Might Be Drunk, and it's all about drinking. And we like, I feel like this drinking comics are a dying breed. I mean, literally, we've we've we used to all get fucked up, and we're getting old. <laughs> literally, so <laughs> we're trying to hold on to this last couple of crooners who like a uh, libation every now and then. I'd love to if you guys eventually have guests and shit comes back when I'm back in America. I'd love to fucking sit in with you guys and get loaded and fucking do one with you. Oh, let's do it. That'd be great. I, don't know I if mean, you ever have guests, but we've had our famous uh, day drunks with the uh, bags of margaritas, walktails. Yeah, walktails. There you Walk go. Yeah, I love that term, dude. When I got to the cellar, we'll f finish this. This isn't even about weed, but like the 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 late show on Thursdays or whatever, was full of fucking you, me, Sam, Wolf, Mackie. It's it just boozers yeah. and a tell outside where he didn't judge you because he's been there. Yeah. And it was just like, I love those at Hanley. It was just like, we're going for it. Yes. This is the late show and we're here fucking so I got to go do a set. I'll be right back. Yeah. Hold that thought. And then just like, God, I love those fucking booze nights with other boozers. I we know. are a dying breed. And the, the drinks were cheaper and you got a couple of freebies. And I remember Michelle Wolf would be like, this is back in the day. She would put down so, Damn. so many gin and tonics. And I'm like, don't you have Seth Meyers in the morning? You're, you're a writer. She's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like. You got to go into an she office. She was fine. Yeah. She handled it. I, I don't It's a runner's liver or yeah. something. She just fucking worked it out by the yeah, next day. Yeah, yeah. Michael Che, too. Che could, I mean, I think still. Che he could, could fucking booze. load it. Yeah. When he was like, ah, we pretty much everything's written for SNL. Huh? Yeah. Let's get going. We're like, hell yeah, dude. Nice yeah. to have you here. You see, he's in trouble with the Jews. Why? Oh, he made a Jew joke. And it, I mean, it, this one's like going up to like. The, Before I even hear it, I stand by Michael Che, whatever yeah. joke he fucking made. It's uh, the Anti-Defamation League is going after him now. 
They, you know they went after me. Really? They, you remember those amazing racist sketches? They put those in the Simon Wiesens off center as a as a uh, uh, an example of of uh, racism on the internet. Whoa. <laughs> he was in the Simon Wiesenthal Center as an example of racism. That's a feather in your cap. That's a badge of honor. Good for you. Absolutely. Don't tell my dad, but yeah, absolutely. <laughs> what uh, What is that? Is that just a, a group that gets mad about Jewish jokes? Yeah, they don't really have a great sense of humor. Um, one time I was in uh, either Edmonton or Minneapolis, one of the Brunson rooms. Yeah. And um, I was on the radio and I made a joke, which later made it into my act, about how Jews are the are the pugs of a human race. They're fucking falling apart. They're too inbred. <laughs> and somebody called up and was like, "Yeah," and they're they're called. That's fucking evil. What they said to Ari. And then and then I think Tammy was like, oh, "I think actually Ari said that." I don't <laughs> think it was a radio host. I think it was Ari. And the people were like, "Oh, okay, that's all right then." What? And I'm like, "What do you mean? It's the same joke." But you're Jewish. Who, who cares who said it? Ah, fuck that. Who cares? It's, a joke's a joke. I agree. So they know Jews and they like them. Uh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's all very silly, but... Who's, who's signing Michael Chase checks? It's fucking Jews. Of course he likes us. I know, exactly. And, and it wasn't even anti-Semitic. It was just kind of true. True is the most edgy. That's when people get the most angry, but... Check it out. Go Dude, get, true is the most edgy. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll gonna text them. I'm going to text them and just say, hey, man, you know, I got your back. Don't worry about it, but... Yeah, I'll text him just to make sure he knows I support him. But fuck, anyway. Yeah, it's like saying. All right, well, one more drink's the new podcast. Yes, um, we might be drunk. Oh, we might be drunk. Not one more drink. Yeah, we, we changed it drunk. again. It's the thirteenth name. What was the What was the first name? Uh, last call or yeah, first was one more drink, and then we had to change it to we might be drunk. I thought I think one time I saw it that you misspelled it on the YouTube. Yeah, and and it was like we might be like brunk or something and i was like oh that's a great title but i think you just misspelled it and didn't like i thought it was a play on that you were drinking well it was because i was drunk but uh that we should have kept it like that you're right that's funnier remember doug benson's um um getting doug with high yes it's like you might say it like that if you're high right. I, I thought maybe you were doing something like that I, I looking back i'm i'm ashamed that i didn't Anyway, buddy, I love you. Thank you for doing this. Hey, thanks for having me. And when, when do you come back? Any idea? I don't know. Maybe springtime. All right. Yeah. Don't come back now. Listen, I mean, I'm not uh, looking at the weather. I'm not looking. I'm not, you know, <laughs> if everything was open, I wouldn't be coming back right now. Yeah. It's pretty chilly. That snow. Yeah. But we got restaurants. Um, yeah. Yeah. The stand's open. Yeah. I did a set the other night. Wow. In indoor sets in New York. Oh. I love it. I, lo I miss it. I miss it like crazy. What a dream. All right. Yeah. All right, buddy. Get high on um, me. All right, thanks. Bye. Skeptic, skeptic. Today's episode of Ari Shapir's Skeptic Tank Podcast is brought to you by Doritos. Guys, when you're smoking weed and you're having friends over, Doritos is the only choice. And I don't mean the brand Doritos. I mean Doritos, the red kind. There's other Doritos, and maybe they're your favorites. Maybe Doritos Flaming Hot is your flavor. Or maybe Doritos Ranch is your favorite. But the reality is, that's your favorite. And we're talking about throwing a party. Maybe you go to somebody at a party and say, hey, you want some Doritos? Flaming hot? You know one friend, you know one friend that would be like, ah, oh, no thanks. Now imagine the same thing with Doritos Red. There's no friends you have like that. None. Case in point. Hey, you want some Doritos uh, Dinamita? Doritos, the red kind. Doritos also suggests you have some water on hand because getting up to go to the kitchen is a fucking ordeal. Maybe Doritos isn't your bag because it's not healthy enough. Doritos says, get some fucking fruit. Maybe it's a fresh grenadina. You just burned off some calories. My friend, you've earned yourself some Doritos. The Doritos, the red guy. The best chip when you're smoking weed. When I was in college, I went to India with um, some friends of mine. Uh, and it, in those days, marijuana wasn't legal anywhere in the United States. So we were pretty excited about going to this city called Varanasi, where um, some traveling Australians had told us that marijuana was legal and that all you had to do is ask the people at your hotel for a bong lassi and they would make you like a yogurt drink with weed in it. So uh, we ended up in this little guest house. And Var Varanasi is just a, a maze of streets and monkeys running through 
rooftops and just a wild, wild place. Oh, and it smells like barbecue because that's where uh, people, many, many people, not just in India, but all over the world go to uh, get cremated. So it just, to put it in perspective, when I got back from India, I went to Six Flags and I passed a burger joint at Six Flags. And the first thing I thought was, oh, it smells like Varanasi. Um, except it's not burgers, it's burning flesh. So we're in this little guest house and we order a bong lassi and the person running the guest house gets this like, now I'm familiar with that look because I've hung out with you and Joey Diaz. It's the look of somebody who's about to overdose you on weed. And it's like kind of a half smile, but something a little more nefarious in it. Uh, and so my friend Emil and I, we, we drank this yogurt drink with God knows how much marijuana was in it. And we decided that we were going to then pay someone to take us out on the Ganges River, one of the most, the most sacred river, it's the most sacred river in the world, uh, on a boat. And so we push off into the river and I'm looking at this city, which is one of the oldest cities in the world. And there's people up to their waist in the river with like bells and candles. And, you know, you can just people are like dancing around burning bodies on the shore. And that's when the Bangalasi kicked in. And I had this like intense deja vu. I felt like I'd been there before like a million times. And then Emil leaned in and whispered to me, the oarsman is using telepathy to control our minds. And uh, that's when I started freaking out. And I don't really remember much of what happened after that. I remember thinking like, maybe I saw a UFO or there a UFO should appear. You know, when you're that high and you're just like, I, I think a UFO is gonna appear. And then, uh, we got back to the guest house and on the way to the guest house, we passed someone from a competing guest house who leans in and says, you know, they're gonna chop your head off at that guest house. Cause he wanted to, I guess, to get our, I don't know, get our business. And yeah, and then we got into the guest house, the power went out, it was a blackout cause blackouts are kind of common in India and I guess we were staying in separate rooms, but like I was just paralyzed with fear for no reason other than I was just overdosed on weed. And then I kind of like made my way down the dark hallway and found Emil's room and went in and he was just sitting in the darkness. <laughs> and he's like, thank God you're here. Thank God you found me. I'm like, I found you. And uh, yeah, and then, and then we came down and, uh, yeah, a few days later, I got really sick from eating, from like sarcastically ordering a banana filter is what it said on the menu instead of fritter. And so for the next month, I was pissing out of my asshole. So there's my story. Skeptic, skeptic, skeptic. Okay, skeptic. let's just talk about weed for a second. It's my episode Fuck 420. Yeah. Yeah, you were on my first episode, by the way. I was going, I'm going, I I'm uploading all the old ones. I was like, oh, Steve was first. That's fucking crazy. I forgot yep. about it. Yeah, it was me, you, and Tracy, and I think Red Band was like sort of running or producing it at the time. Yeah, that's when he's still producing and still like <laughs> it's joining in too much. He, yeah, he was part <laughs> of it. Like I remember asking questions and stuff, and I'm like, I don't really even remember. Like, uh, how, what do you know about relationships? I'm like, I don't think you've ever been in a relationship. So <laughs> at the time, no. He yeah, just that's what it was. One. Yeah, yeah. Um, so do you remember? Do you remember when you started smoking? Do you remember when not smoking and then smoking? Um, I, I never smoked pot in college or in Whoa. high school, uh, in high school, maybe like once or twice, but not, not like at, not frequently at all. Then college was a different story. Cause I was like, a th I, yeah, I was a theater major. So everybody smoked pot. So at parties yeah. and stuff, but it wasn't an everyday thing. It was just sort of recreational. 
And then yeah. when I first moved out to LA, I didn't smoke at all at the comedy store like the first year or two. And Me then I was just like, yeah. And then it was just like, oh, Jeff Scott was like, you know, I was working there and I was like, I would do a little bit at night with Tommy, like yeah. to kind of like, like literally like a midnight toker. Like I would I'd meet him in the, the green room and he'd be playing that stupid guitar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I would be done <laughs> counting the money. At the register, and then you know, and also putting some in my pocket. So the nerd, <laughs> yeah, you had to be sober for that. And then once that, was and done. then Tommy would be playing the, yeah, <laughs> Tommy would be playing the guitar in the main room, you know, and you'd hear that, and you knew he was smoking pot. So I'd go back there and smoke with him, and you know that was it. And then like I think honestly, for me it was like, dr- like, like. E- drinking became a thing and like not like pills but like i kind of took some pills here and there like it was sort of there are a lot of recreational things happening and i am like i need to settle on one and i think pot just sort of took over that that chore of being like this is going to be your recreational drug yeah like no more like i'm one of the few people that like i've done coke probably five six times in my life and i had a great time every time yeah, I had a great time every time, but I never chased it. Like I never was like, I need to do that again tomorrow or like in an hour from now. So mm-hmm. um, the same way, I'm just yeah, like, pot I don't was do just like, I, and then people were like, you want to do coke? I'm like, all right, but I didn't ask. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know, like you were saying, like Edinburgh's got like a big sort of vibe about coke and coke. stuff. I did, I didn't do it when I was there. I was, you know, but. Again, I'm like I I don't not that I wouldn't do it. I just I'm like I if I'm going to do something that's going to be a part of my life, I think pot's probably the safest. So, yeah, you're a heavy pot about, smoker yeah. now. I mean, yeah. like when did that when did that happen? Uh, I don't know. I think yeah, probably around the league. I would say when Dude, I got you, the league. I, I was just doing this for my podcast. I did a gay podcast um um this week, and then I was like at the end, I was like I was like oh that reminds me of another gay, and I just I just I recorded a few weeks ago, but it was it was. I was like, oh, Jeff died, you know? And then I was remembering, yeah. do you remember starting to smoke pot with someone who had HIV and having the moment of like, I don't think I could, I should be doing this? Oh, you know what? I think it was back, it was like, a, it, it was back loaded for me. So I remember smoking with Jeff probably for yeah. about a year and then finding out he had HIV and then having <laughs> oh, that like, that questioning where you're like, like, you know, like someone's like, oh, you know, he's got HIV and you're like, oh, Oh, really? Shit, I didn't know that. God, I hope he, you know, that sucks. That's, But in your mind, you're like, I'm already like, should I be have ever have touched my lips to anything he's ever touched before? <laughs> yeah, it's like it's too late. Am I going to die? You know, like, <laughs> should I have a will? Am I now, yeah. And I was like, and he's blown me like five times too. So I'm like, that can't be safe either. <laughs> I mean, I, uh, he blows the, the pot smoke into my mouth. We shotgun every time while we French kiss. So <laughs> dude, none of this you. could be safe. He used to <laughs> he hit did, on you dude. so hard. He grabbed my cot. I we did the I did the memorial like we had a little Zoom memorial, and I uh, I came in last minute like I was sort of I came in and I was I was like kind of listening for like fifteen minutes, but there were a lot of people on there and people were sharing stories and then it was like oh Steve do you? I was like yeah I'll share and I told the story about how I almost hit him with the car, uh like as a joke I he was crossing the road and I was like and he got like you know it was one of those m- moments where he was like not having it and he became like a total cunt queen. And he started yelling at me, and and, Queen, uh, yeah. and I'm like, yeah, I'm like, but then like you know he didn't talk to me for two weeks, and then two weeks later, h- him and I were the only people out and 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 sacred grounds, and we were smoking pot together, and I let him grab my cock, and it was all forgiven. Everything was for- that's all it took. It was a very simple. <laughs> it's like that's all. And, I wanted. that's all I wanted. Yeah, and I didn't know his sister was on the uh, on the Zoom thing too, and I'm like, you have to know that he grabbed many many cocks, and thank God was he was like, beloved. Wait, Otherwise, I can't be breaking the news to you that he's gay, right? <laughs> Please. Yeah. Tell me I'm not breaking the news to you. <laughs> and that all the horrible things you hear about Me Too, your brother did some of those things to many male comedians. But honestly, yeah. he, he was amazing. So I would never... F- Who's going to narc out Jeff Scott for grabbing your cock? Give me a nah, break. And also, it's too late now. Yeah. Um. Do you think you you golf better when you're high? I, yes. I've talked myself into that. I can I can smoke a little bit. Like I'll hit like a little bit uh because my back i usually carry or i walk so my back will start to bother me it gets like tight so i'll hit a little bit at like nine the turn but i've taken edibles before and one time i i played the i was so high i played the wrong hole (gasps) i uh 
you know, you like tee off, and then like I was in the fairway, it was a par five, and I there were like two greens, but they were like sort of neck. I thought they were like next to each other, <laughs> and I went and played the wrong hole. Like people were coming up, and they were like, "Where are?" I'm like, "I'm in the middle of a shot. Can you please get out of my way?" And they were like, "You're on hey, dude, the wrong <laughs> hole." <laughs> and I was like, "How do you know what hole I'm on?" And they go, "Cause we're playing this hole. You're we're moving up to the green that you are. Don't you understand? You're working backwards from the green, like." The hole goes this way and you're coming from the the asshole entrance. And I was like, okay, fine. I'm like, people make mistakes. They should probably mark something like that. And they're like, nobody's ever made that mistake before. No one. You just aimed at the wrong. They do mark it at the beginning of every hole. They mark it. You know what it is? It was like, when you do stuff like that, you're like, all right, I've taken a little pot. I've honest, like no professional golfer that takes it seriously smokes pot while they're doing this, I think. But... So now I've got to really pay attention. I've got to really focus in. So once I became laser focused on that specific green, like there was no thought of like, I think I'm in the wrong spot. I was already like, no, I'm in the right. So yeah, (laughs) I I mean, you're on the wrong hole. How do you know which hole? (laughs) Putting though, I think I'm a better, like I'm much more relaxed putting high than I uh, am. When we used to play poker, did you down at like commerce and Hollywood and stuff? Did did you play? No. No, no, that was before that because that was before the league. Like, I don't think we didn't smoke uh, before we went, did we? I don't even think you really no, smoked that much then, but too. But later, either, right? I started smoking. When I was playing tournaments at Hustler tournaments, and there was like seven, eight hour tournaments, yeah. every break, every hour and a half break, I'd run in my car, I'd get that Maui Wowie, I'd smoke heavily because you only have 10 minutes, and I'd go <laughs> breathe it, and then come back, and I could read people's minds. Wow, really? I would yeah. have thought like remember the very beginning when we went to commerce, like we were nervous just getting in like just figuring it Yeah, just sitting down and kind of getting the lay of the land. I couldn't imagine trying to navigate those waters high. Oh yeah, I think we would have got arrested. Cigarettes. And we'd go out yeah, to smoke we, a cigarette. And yes. we're like, can, can I get the seat back? And, t- and they're like, sir, you can leave your chips. Like, well, who's going to guard them? They're like, sir, no one's stealing yeah. your chips at a casino. <laughs> you're like, yeah, you say. You're in on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. The beginning of those days where, yeah, we couldn't smoke pot and do that. Do you yeah. remember the time we smoked, though, on the way back from San Diego with <gasps> Simone? And we were in the car. We had a hot box the car so bad that poor Simone probably got high. He was driving. And he couldn't remember that 405 101 where it come they come together. He literally yeah. couldn't figure out how to get from one lane to the other. <laughs> That's and right, we hotboxed him. He's yep. never smoked too, and he didn't know how to deal with ever, it. If one ever, of us got ever, ever. You know what it is, dude. We did that to him twice, by the way. You know that, right? Do you remember when we were in Vail? When we, me, you, Justin, and him, we had rented the car and driving from Denver to Vail, and it started snowing crazily, and the windshield wipers and didn't we really were work. So and the windshield wipers didn't work. He was driving, right? It's the only time I've ever seen him get aggravated with us because we were high and we were like laughing and it's like, this is crazy. And he's like, this isn't funny, okay? We could die. I, we don't know where we're going. And I was like, don't be such a fucking pussy. Yeah. I'm like, such a pussy this guy is. Why don't you smoke some pot and calm down, you fucking loser? <laughs> <laughs> it was dangerous too. When it's snowing on the Dude, pass, like they were. It was. We were on a highway doing, trying to keep up with highway traffic in like blizzard conditions. It, it was with no hard. windshield wipers. Oh my god, I forgot about that. Oh, he was so pissed. And then afterwards, he goes, "It did feel kind of good." Yeah, I know. We've oh done that god. to him a couple times. That's like. Truly, like, I, you know, being high is fun, and, like, I've had stories. Like, I, t- I told a story on, on This Is Not Happening. Do you remember that show you, that um, Roy Wood hosts? Do you oh, ever yeah, hear that show? he was a great host of that show. Yeah. This Is Not Happening? <laughs> this Is Not Happening, yeah. Yeah, I did it when while. they had the first host, the original host. I don't remember the original Wait, host's which name. which one but... were you talking about getting high? It's not the me, me Bobby Lee, Natasha You story. Which one no, was no, it was the Kid Rock story uh, where I was oh, in, yeah, um, yeah. yeah, I was in Nashville. Oh, you went and outside I went... to smoke weed. Yes, and I thought I was going to smoke with the fucking guy that owns the place, Santa, but he was smoking pot with, well, he wasn't smoking pot. He was smoking a cigar with with uh, Kid Rock out there, and I went out there, and I was so embarrassed, and I didn't know what, I was so high already. I'd gone, I was, I'd smoked in the car on the way there, because the people that took me there, we got high on the way there, and I was yeah. already high. I was like, I'm going to go smoke with the Santa guy. And then I was out back with the Santa guy that owns the Santa's pub. And I did not know he was talking to Kid Rock. And I was so stoned and nobody wanted me around. And I didn't know how, you know, when you walk into a situation, and you don't know how to leave it. You're like, I don't know how to, I'm like, I'm already too embarrassed. 
and yeah. you know it was just like yeah, i told the story yeah and then someone called you know people were thought i was fucking slow and then some guy, <laughs> I told him I introduced myself as Steve like three times embarrassingly. And then some and guy like, yelled oh, Kevin from, yeah. And then some guy yelled Kevin from the thing. And I was like, oh, that's me. I got to go. And then I heard Kid Rock say, I think that guy's retarded. Um, yeah. That was the best line too. Because you get every one of those stories gets to an unbelievable moment. That's what makes it a story. And, yeah. and you could tell you were like, you could see the audience looking at you and specifically you. And it's just that moment of like, guys. I get it's almost you didn't say it but like this is that moment and you're like I get it I know that I'm a known liar but I am yeah. telling yep. you the truth it was like but put whatever yes. you're thinking out of your mind it happened this is oh, very good. yeah implausible but I'm telling you right now Kid Rock is in the back of that fucking yes, place Rick Ingram was with me oh really well that verifies mm -hmm. it there sometimes yeah. you get so high you see somebody at the store that's so high and you don't realize they're high you're like what's wrong with them and then it hits you like oh of course, that's they're just fucked up. They're, so they're not answering your questions. Have you, I have a question? Have you ever had to leave the stage because you were too high? Okay, no, I, I power through it. I've I've bombed before because I'm too high. I've lost my train of thought. Uh, first time Rogan made me get too high in Boston. I remember going okay. like, okay, I wrapped up my I was wrapping up my set and I know I had two bits left. I was like bit A, bit B. I was like, okay, tell you what, I'll do bit B first and then I'll do bit A. Did bit B. And finish that, and I was like, that bit A, whatever that is, is gone. It's not in my head. And I'm quickly trying to find it, and I was like doing that extended laugh, like, uh, you know, whatever you can to buy yourself a couple seconds. Wasn't coming to me. And then I was like, hey, guys, Joe Rogan will be here in a second. And everyone started going fucking nuts. And I'm like, well, that was the wrong thing to say. And then I never, I never found it. I just had to get off. Oh, my God. And then another time at the old Houston Laugh Stop, uh, the waitresses had electronic uh, – um, uh, like pads to punch in the whatever their people were ordering and one of them was in the back and i just thought someone was giving me the light early and i got off in like six minutes on a, on a 25 i was like i guess i guess they oh. want me off yeah i got off and no one was around <laughs> damn dude i i remember getting uh, the early days of edibles before they you knew like like you know the they were milligram packages and stuff you would get like just, a couple gummy bears and mm -hmm. uh, I remember I had a long day at the league and then I had a spot at the factory and I hadn't eaten all day and I went like straight from one to the other. But on the way, I was like, I just want to fucking get a good night's sleep. So I took an, uh, a gummy on the way to the factory on an empty stomach and I guess I got yeah. bumped like maybe someone came in and I wasn't like the time and it was like starting to hit me and I got called on stage and I'm on stage. It's not a lot of people there, but I just felt cold sweats over my whole body and then like you know when you're going like I, I'm, I'm probably gonna pass out and so i'm like trying to do the joke but thinking i'm like am i just high and i don't realize that like this isn't happening or am, am i ignoring the physical signs that are allowing me to like i'm, I'm gonna pass out and so i started feeling like the, the cold sweats over my hands and then i was like i started sweating my back and i'm like this is not normal for being on stage for the first two and a half minutes of a set and so i just go <laughs> Hey, I'm uh, I'm not feeling great. <laughs> I just said to go. I'm out of here. Like in the middle of like a setup, I go. I'm just not feeling great. I'm sorry. And Adam Ray was next. He was like sitting in whatever that Jamie booth is over there at the factory. And yeah. he goes, uh, I can. I remember you. Something. I go. And everyone was like laughing. I'm like, no, no, I'm serious. I'm done. I go, who's next? And Adam Ray's like, are you serious? And I'm like, yeah. Can you yeah. come up here? And he's like, okay. And he came <laughs> up like on he stage there. and he's like, God, oh, keep it going for Steve. And I went right to the bathroom. I threw up in the bathroom. But wow. I'll tell you this. Weed has saved me before from like, I, do you remember when we went to San Diego to the, to the Chargers game and we drank all day like at the game and then we smoked pot before we left and we drove and we from made Edgar, we the made Charger Edgar. game we go, Edgar, to if you the quit store drinking, at the end of the first quarter we did yep. jello shots before with those people that was like hey we got actually we'll buy shots. your ticket like, that's my favorite yeah and we go Edgar if you we'll buy you a ticket if you quit drinking after the first quarter at the half so you can drive home he was like fucking deal yeah it was awesome I remember he drove all the way back and I remember being like, oh, I, I'm uh, the whole time. I'm like, I have, but I, I have to throw up, but I didn't. I got yeah. all the way back to the store. I booted at the store, <laughs> and I right to totally. Bathroom. I said, I go, yeah, that was weed. Weed helped me settle my stomach. If you just had booze in you, I would. We would have had to pull over 15 times while I yacked on the side of the road. What a fucking but it just, warrior! It settles you held it me the down. The entire two and a half hours traffic there, all two the and way a half back. Hours. 
And then as soon as, weed, soon as we got to the it co- was like, the weed. excuse me, bathroom barf. Yeah. Right. Well, that's it the was, power of weed. It was the weed. Yep. yep. Well, thanks, Stevie. Uh, you got no a problem, podcast brother. right now called uh, What's the Odds with Steve Renazzisi? That's right. Yep. We come uh, out usually every Wednesday or Thursday every week. Yeah, it's a good fucking gambling and fun podcast. Um, yep. All right, buddy. Thanks. I appreciate it. No problem, brother. Happy 420. Right. Happy 420. Congratulations. <laughs> skeptic, skeptic, okay. skeptic, skeptic. I press record. Skeptic, skeptic. Okay, great. How high do you look? I wish I could see you. Um, I think I got a little bit in the eyes. It, it's it's tough because also if you've just gone through a breakup, you look kind of high. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I have um, I have a scar in my right eye. Right, I've had it since um, fifth grade. Yeah. And I'm looking down at the phone. I'm looking down at the phone because I'm talking to you, and I realize I should be looking up at the screen. Um, my sister at your scar. No, I'm looking down at the phone on the table because I'm, and then meanwhile I'm supposed to be looking at the screen. Okay. Oh right, right. Um, my sister hit me in the face with a Ken doll. We might have even spoken about this before, and uh, it scarred me in the eye. Um, and it's a red slash right in my eye. It's pretty sizable. And when I um, am tired or when the eye is bothering me, it gets even worse. The bloodshot. So sometimes, if I'm driving um, at night and stuff, I like. I like drinking it like people would think I'm drinking if they pulled me over. My eyes would just look completely, wow. completely bloodshot because I've been stone sober and pulled over before. And the cops are like, you've been drinking. I'm like, no, they're like, why is your eye all bloodshot? And I'm like, my sister hit me with a Malibu Ken in 1986. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a punk rock lyric. My eye bleeds. Well, your, your Ken doll made my eyes bleed. So I'm like, yeah. When did you start doing edibles? Um... On purpose or by accident? Oh shit! Really? Well, the first how'd you do by accident? Year that I even tried a few edibles, I didn't know what I was doing because they were all homemade, and no one ever knew what the milligrams were and like how to paste them and stuff. So I've I've had experiences where like in the beginning either it didn't nothing happened or I was like I thought I was gonna be hospitalized. Um, <laughs> there's no in between. There it's no very, in between. so hard to get the exact dosage <laughs> to be in between those two. It's like I, I, like one time someone gave me a cookie and I felt nothing, and then I ate a second cookie and then I ate a third cookie, and by the time I ate the third cookie, I was <laughs> literally incapacitated to the point where even a medical professional would have thought that I was dead. I swear to God. Oh my God. I swear to oh God. God. Just like couldn't even function. <laughs> I was just laying shaking. Just laying there shaking. <laughs> and then um, and another time. And that, that was like, I think that was my first edible ever, actually. I was bartending on Thanksgiving Eve. Okay. Yeah, family man. So yeah. that that's the biggest bar night of the year, right? The, oh, Wednesday night. Yeah. 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 That's reunion day. Thanksgiving yeah. Eve. And I'm, so that's like the Super Bowl when you're bartending, right? And um, I was like, I am not drinking tonight even because I want to just be on my game and I want to make all this money, right? And uh, we were packed, like standing room only, the place I worked at. And then my buddy yeah. I was working with, uh, my, the other bartender, he was like, oh, I just got these these chocolate chip cookie edibles. And I was like, oh, you know, I'm not drinking. Maybe I was doing edible. I never did one before. And he goes, good. And I go, what do I do? And he goes, just, just, just eat some. And so I ate a cookie, and he, and, and, and he goes, oh, you ate the whole cookie? And I go, yeah. And he goes, oh, I don't know if you should eat the whole cookie. Uh, and I was like, well, first of all, by the way, the cookie was delicious. Like, I couldn't even <laughs> taste the marijuana. It was like one of the best chocolate cookies I've ever had. But so then, we're, so I took the thing, right? And I didn't know how edibles worked. So we're bartending, we're bartending, half hour, hour. I'm not feeling anything. He's like, oh, I'm feeling mine. I go, I'm not feeling anything. And he goes, well, he was, he was a lot like a smaller of a guy, like thinner and stuff. So he's like, yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe have a little more then. So I was like, all right. So I had another full cookie, right? After how long? Um, 45 minutes to an hour. That's the exact time where you should not take any more. Correct. That's the time where everybody says, maybe I need more. And it's like, just wait till an hour 10. First time, but this is the first time I'm ever doing an edible, right? So yeah. it gets worse, man. Uh, so then I um, I wait like another 20 minutes. I'm getting impatient because he's like, dude, I'm so high. And, and I didn't smoke at the time, weed at all. I didn't, didn't smoke. So, I mean, I had smoked, 
but I, I mean, yeah. like, pu two puffs passed because somebody had it. I never bought it. I never had an edible before, nothing. So, again, I didn't know how this worked. So, 20 minutes later, and he's like, wow, I'm, I'm feeling it. I'm like, what the hell? And I ate a third cookie, full. So, even if this person only put in, like, five grams of cookie, which I'm assuming a cookie is more than five grams, that would mean that someone who's never done an edible in their life took a 15 milligram cookie, milligram. That's retarded. Right. And I'm thinking they were at least 10 or 20 milligrams. So there had to be. Plus, in those days, it was no milligram. It was just like some are stronger than others. Yes. And so I just I ate yeah. three full ones. And then at around 10, 11 o'clock, oh, when, when the bar filled to capacity, <laughs> they all hit me at the exact same time. <laughs> exact same time yeah, they don't, and I, I they swear don't come to, on 30 minutes later either as long as you get one you're like ah shit i got about 40 minutes and it's gonna get really bad no it's just like <laughs> they just join up in in one shot and it was my first time ever feeling that and i and i grabbed my friend and i was like what did you do to me what did you do it's almost like the second one pulled the first one backwards <laughs> yeah to it. yes the third one pulled it back even further yeah dude it was Both. it was just i'm sure the first Jesus. one would have put me on my ass completely it's just that I didn't know to wait. So when they hit, they hit like I ate three cookies and I never did that before in my life. And I, I, I look like, um, I look like, I feel like, you know, you ever see like a very old person or even like a meth addict, how they like hobbled over shaking, trying to walk. Yeah. <laughs> did you go so, home? Did you work? What? Did you work? Yeah. My shift was going until four in the morning. This hit me at 11 PM and it was like everybody was there. And so it was Thanksgiving Eve too. And it was everyone who like, um, you know, when you go away to college or away to school or you moved away from home or anything like that, you always come home for the holidays. So this was the night because it was a neighborhood bar that everybody came home to see people you haven't seen in forever. Yeah, um, I was tell them about college and shit like that. Yeah, but not just college. This was after college. This was in my 20s, oh, but right. people still come home that, like, moved away. It was just I saw a lot of people. You see people you haven't seen in the longest time that night. Um, oh, damn. And I forget what year it was. It was a long time ago. But uh, I, I literally, like, um, turned around, and then there was, like, the bar was, like, the people asking for drinks was, like, five deep. And I just looked at them. <laughs> I looked at them like I imagined, like um, remember, you know when people used to like chase like Frankenstein, like the like the mob with the torches and stuff. They used to like. Uh -huh. <laughs> it just felt like they were like the, a full village of people coming to hunt me down. <laughs> like like they may as well have had pitchforks and torches and stuff, and, and like and, like screaming at you to get like lanterns, like they were like I was a witch almost. <laughs> and I, that's how I felt. I felt like they were going to like burn me at the stake or something. And I, and, and actually, you know what? Now that I'm thinking of this, so you know my buddy Casey Jost? Yeah, yeah. So Casey and Colin Jost are from Staten Island, and this was our, na our neighborhood bar. So Casey is there, yeah. and I'll never forget Colin actually came in and he walked into the bar. And I'm like, hey, buddy, how you been? How you been? Right, right. Good to see you. And, um, I remember I grabbed the menu and I turned around and I said, here, because he, he wanted to eat. I gave him the menu, right? He was telling me what he wanted and I would just turn around to put it in the machine, like the touch system. And by the time he told me what he wanted and by the time I turned around to put it in the touch system, I would forget it. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and then I would like lean in and I go, what was that again? And I remember he, he told me and I turn around and I would just forget it. And then I just was so high. I just grabbed the menu and I ripped it in half. I just tore it. I tore the plastic off of it. Like, and I pulled the piece of paper out and I, and I grabbed a marker and I said, just circle what you want on this menu. <laughs> <laughs> and he actually went down the menu and circled everything he wanted. And then I turned around and used that to, 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 put, to put it in. I had to be taken out from the bar. How long did you last? It, it was only. Two nights in my entire bartending career of like a decade or over a decade. Two nights I couldn't finish. This was one. When did of them. you quit? What time? Well, it's not soon thereafter because uh, someone was like, I, I remember they, I think they said they asked me for a Jack and Coke, <laughs> and I turned around to put it in. I forgot. I turned back and I said, "Would you say again?" And they're like Jack and Coke, and I turned around and I couldn't remember it. Uh. And then I was just like, uh, 
And then I turned around and I was like, and then I remember I was like, I know this Jack, and I couldn't even remember the Coke. <laughs> it was like, what else probably? And then my cousin That's came in and, and he was like, with. like I, luckily, like all the people that worked there also hung out there. So there was like people that there that could cover me that night. And, and I remember after that, they, they actually took me and they put me in a booth in the restaurant to lay down because I was like shaking. Like I looked like a, like a, like I was saying, like an old meth head. Oh my God. <laughs> like an old person or a meth head. And, and I just, and I just passed out. And then they woke me up at like four in the morning and drove me home. It's just that second cookie. It's just a second cookie. There's no reason to take it. I, I was, had one in San Diego once where somebody was like, eat half and it doesn't hit you in like 45 minutes, take the other half. And it was like 40 minutes. And I was like, I'm take the other half. And my buddy was like, that's fine, but this is how those stories start. And I waited like 10 minutes. And, yeah. and I was glad I did because it kicked in. So my, I have another bad edible one. My, uh, my Shay, this, my friend that I work with, she gives me this, this fruity pebbles treat like rice it's krispie treat but it's fruity pebbles like and um again you you don't know what the milligrams are right <laughs> yeah so i split it i like i just split it with my girlfriend and um i thought we would be fine like we ate a little bit and we didn't feel it and so we ate a little bit more and we ended up just splitting it it wasn't big it was like the size of like like half the size of a twinkie even so it didn't i didn't feel like it would be that strong yeah. And we got so high that, like, we, I remember we watched the Lego movie. Yeah, it's a good movie. And to this day, I don't know if the Lego movie was the most fascinating movie that was ever made in the ever. <laughs> yeah. Or I was just that high. Well, like when they when they spoiler alert, but when they show that it's actually like Will Ferrell playing the With thing, his like kids, yeah, our minds were blown. <laughs> and then we watched the inter the interview after that 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 Seth Rogen one, and we were like. Are these the two best movies that were ever made, or is it like they're coincidence? Yeah. But um, dude, I had to, when I, no, whenever I, mean, I download stuff to... like m movies and TV shows and stuff, and I watch them high, I'd have to put them in a separate folder that said "Watch this again to be sure," because it'd be like episodes of Family Guy. Like <laughs> yeah, I think this might have been exactly. the best piece of television in history. <laughs> yes, and you know what? If, if that's what the weed does, then I'm doing it all the time <laughs> because. I often, I often feel like I'm watching the best movie ever made when I'm high, and I'm like, "What are the odds that I am getting this good of a streak of picking good no movies?" I, or is the, the yeah. right? It's the low. The, the, the common denominator is that I'm. Well, high. Why would you not want to enjoy everything on the level of Gone with the Wind every time you see anything? I know. May as well. What a great life. I know. Yeah. I know. I started doing edibles more, and like during this quarantine, at certain points, and. Everything I was watching was like a home run. And I was like, this is the greatest streak of my life. And then I just realized, oh, I'm just high every night. <laughs> I can sometimes, I, the only problem with getting high and watching this is I can see through bad acting. Yes. Oh, my God, dude. Wait, I can't believe you said that. That is all I've been thinking about the last few weeks. Because, well, no, you know what it is? It's I'm high, but here's the other thing. This is when you see the bad acting or the okay. good. When you're high, right, turn on closed captioning. Because it's almost like you're reading the script as they act it. It's actually made me like be like become like what I think I could act a little better. Because I see when I see the line, and a lot of times with closed captioning, it comes before they say it, right? So when that's happening, I read the line, then I look up, and right before they say it, I get to think in my head like, how, how would, would I it? deliver the line? How should they uh -huh. deliver? The line? Yeah, or how it how how or if I don't know, like I wonder how they're gonna uh. do it. And sometimes it's like that was terrible, and sometimes it's like oh, that was so much better than I expected. I get why they did that, and I'm actually like, kind of like watching this live in my head, like this. I'm reading the script, but I'm like judging every every single line delivery, yeah. and that's what I've been doing. And it, and it it shows you when the acting sucks. It, it really, really does because they're just like saying uh, the lines. Well. Maybe it, maybe you could just do that for close capturing not being high, but I'm tuned into it when I'm high. I'm telling you that. Yeah, yeah, and, and you notice shows more like 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 dumb like Hawaii Five O like CBS shows, you know, where you're like, oh, you guys are just like whipping yes. through this. Yes, this, you're not trying to win any. Yes, award. where it's like these are definitely like these are definitely like day actors, right. you know, like <laughs> yeah. you know, like they're like good character actors that just need yeah. to just need to know what to do on set to follow instructions, not even act well. You know, just come I need in. You here. Know your role. I need you saying the line right by the time. window. Yes, it's that's camera set up. Yes. Get there. I don't care. Just get there. Totally see yeah. that, and I like it. I actually like it because it's funny. It's fun to me. I've been getting like that with uh, 
with stuff in other languages or on mute at a bar. On mute at a bar, you can like see it too. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. When they're overacting mm-hmm. and stuff. I've been, I've been, um, the last few days. All I've been doing this because I go back to work this coming week, but like we had, to, we had to be down, so I really not really going anywhere or anything. So I've been home. I, I've been binge watching. Um, Practical uh, Joker. <laughs> old episodes, decades old episodes of Hell's Kitchen. Hell's Kitchen. Like I started in the beginning, and now I'm on season thirteen, oh. and there's twenty seasons. With the angry fucking British guy. Yeah, oh. I love it. It's the same thing over and over and over. I but, ate this squill. Um, there's mold in this, and you made me eat it. Yeah, it's. The, I've been doing that, but wait, what was I getting at? Wait, 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 wait. This was, was on mute. Watching on mute, something like that. Watching when you're high, you can see. Shit. I wonder if when you're high, can you see the setup of the of the fake like reality shows where you're like, oh, I can see how this was like faked. Wait, what was my absolute? What was my freaking point though? Because I did have one. Get there. Now, but I, what I've been doing. What were you saying right before that? It, watching what stuff on right mute at a bar. You can also see through like the acting. Sometimes you can see overacting yeah. day players. This is a fun podcast. Day players, day players. Day players seeing bad acting. God damn it! Bad acting, but seeing good acting, trying to get their lines, getting ready. Yes, mind. yes. And then, and then you brought up Hell's Kitchen, though, with the closed caption. Oh, I yeah. know. Yes, that's. I've been doing that. Yeah, and that's the other thing I've been doing is I've been trying to think of fun Halloween costumes. Okay, okay like go. okay, I thought of one today. Okay, ready? It's corny. It's, the, the point is like combining two things. So like you know, um, yeah. Uh, like, uh, what's a fame? Who's a famous Dan? What? Dan. Dan something. Give me a Dan. Dan. Dan Soder. Well, yeah. Okay, sure, person. sure. But it's like, oh, that's who you think. Steely Dan Soder. Oh, right. Like yeah. I don't know. I, I, I like, but either puns or combining two people. So it's like, um, uh, Ario Speedwagon. A-R-I. I can't think of anything. R E O S Yeah. No, that's too that's but too not, long. wait, what's REO Speedway? Oh, REO Speedway. No no no. So I wish I, I you know I made a list and I gotta find the list because right now I'm actually high, so I cannot think of anything. But no, like like this is not one. This oh this is one, but this is <laughs> I'm so high. This is um not a a double one, but this is so ready? Orange face, orange face, tuxedo. Scotch, Yammy Davis Jr. You get Orange it? Orange face, tuxedo, Yammy Davis Jr. Ar- Doesn't help that you cut out. Yeah, orange face. Yeah, like orange skin. Orange, orange skin, skin, tux, scotch. But why tux Yammy and scotch? Davis why Jr. would it just be tux? You know, so just so you know who oh, it right. is. Like, Yammy hey, Davis Jr. Okay. You know? Oh, cigar. Maybe cigar. Yeah. Sorry, cigar. And that's what your you costume know? would be. You'd be you get what I'm saying? I get it. Fun. I get it. I get it. Like, okay, so original Halloween costumes is okay, what I mean. Yeah, I get it. I like it. So I usually trade back and forth with Casey, and we have a list of like 100, okay. but I just can't think of any right now. But um, I thought of one for okay. you. Okay, yep. ready? You get um, a poncho. Okay. And um, a um, sombrero. Sombrero, poncho, okay. Poncho, right? Yeah. And you are Arriba. (laughs) (laughs) Isn't that good? Not bad. (laughs) You get it? Uh, uh, Maybe. I'll try it. No, but you get it, right? Yeah, I get it. I'll try that one. (laughs) Isn't (laughs) it great? Yeah, that's You don't roll your R, so you, like, really, you're Arriba, but you'll say you're Arriba. 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 That's not bad. Yeah, Yeah, Arriba. That's, like, that's bespoke. Right. If Sammy Davis Jr. just. Just had yellow skin. If he yellow faced, then he could go as Yammy Davis Jr. Orange, orange. orange. Oh right, right, yeah. right. Well, you get yams at a better place than I do. I guess. Uh, we could also put a little sauce and pasta on you and call you Arabiata. Arabiata. That's just. Is it Ar- Arabiata? Yeah, I thought it's Arabiata. It's Arabata. I think it's pronounced. Arabata, I yeah. think I'm right, but the, Unless, for me to correct you, you on I, you this know what? would be I, I moronic. Think you, you you might be absolutely right. You might be absolutely right. 
Dude, one time I, I brought a cookie into it. I got it from a fan, a big uh, uh, M&M weed cookie into the stand. And I asked um, mm. one waitress if she wanted one. And she goes, no, 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 I can't. I'm working. And I was like, okay. And then I asked Adele. And she said, I can't in front of these people. Uh, let me go to the back where we used to go smoke pot in the old stand. And so she had some. And then the first waitress was like, hey, I can have some. Let's go outside, though, where the cameras aren't watching. And then I got her. I, I got I, Everybody was on it by the end. The entire place was on it. And they were all incapacitated. And no one wanted to tell anybody they were on it because they were all hiding it from each other. But one got, one got everyone It was high? one of those novelty ones. It was one of those Mrs. Fields ones. <laughs> Yeah. Wait, what? Everybody. This novelty, this novelty weed. The entire piece. place, Grace, all of them. Every one of them. <laughs> you mean, like, like you know, like the big, like the huge lollipops? Uh-huh. You're saying it was a novelty weed cookie. Yeah, it was like, yeah, exactly. It was a novelty <laughs> weed cookie, exactly. Novel. Novelty. No, but novelty is the funniest way to describe it. <laughs> so it's also to describe a weed cookie. It's like, it causes, it causes like the, inc- the incapacitation of 20 adults. Yeah, it's, it's like, like every it's drug. But I have like a, a propeller ha- uh, hat on, so it's okay. <laughs> like there's a good chance yeah. if the cookie was that strong and everyone was high off it, it could have been like someone's demise. And like to describe the cookie, the cookie's potency as novelty is hysterical. <laughs> Yeah, it's like one person was like, nah, I'll, you know, I got, I got high and I'll eat a cookie. A big cookie for sure. Usually it's like novelty is like not that. It's like, <laughs> oh, it's novelty gum. It's shaped We're like this, weed, you, but it's not really yeah, weed. Like, but novelty is like set the bar lower. Yeah. So you call that a novelty cookie is so funny to me. It's like, well, maybe here, it was a now be careful with this. It's novelty. Yeah. The first time I ever smoked, I didn't even, I didn't even get, tell you that one. What, when was it? It was um, freshman year of college, and the first time I ever smoked was um, this in the same night. We were in the park, and my friends had a blunt, and I smoked that. But like, yeah, it was the uh, first time I ever smoked, so it didn't hit me immediately for some reason. And then we drove to my friend's house, and they were potheads. And I was like, I didn't even feel anything. And he's like, All right, we'll do this. You'll feel this. And I smoked out of a six foot bong. The first time I ever smoked. Your first time smoking? First night Dude, ever. that's like getting a jumped blunt, into a gang. A joint. Dude, so I don't know why, like I, what, like, but right, like, right after I started to get high, and then when we got to the six foot bong, I did it, and I'm like, let me just go. Let me go now, because I, I didn't really know how it worked. I'm like, I'm going to, like, I don't know how long it's going to take me to get really high, and I don't want to drive <laughs> high, so let me just go. So it's like I was already feeling – I started to feel very high. I just didn't know it. Yeah. And then I hit that bong. I hit that six-foot bong, and I got in my car. And um, immediately, I was like two a block or two from where I, I was. I got to a red light. Yeah. And I remember being like 100% of my body is numb, right? Like my, 100% of my body, right? And my, I have my hands at 10 and 2. And I was like, um, I was 18 maybe. And I was like, yeah. telling my brain, telling my brain to move my knuckles on my hands and my hands weren't moving. And then I was like, you know, you got to step on the gas in a moment and you're going to take your foot off the brake. So I was at a red light and I was like, my, f- my, I couldn't make, I was frozen, dude. Oh, in the and car. then I looked in the rear view, I looked in the rear view mirror and right yeah. behind me was a cop car. And I had driven a block, and I'm like, no way, no way. I didn't, I didn't know what to expect. You know, I wasn't prepared. I didn't realize I would be that high because I didn't, I didn't understand how it worked, and I thought I'd be okay to just get home. And it was very apparent immediately I, yeah. I couldn't. And and then I was like, I remember the light felt like it was red for like four hours. I and forgot I just, about that. The I, time, the time changing. Time just yes. warps. Dude, uh, I swear to God, I felt like I was at the light. I felt like I was at the light for like four or five minutes. It was probably a minute. I don't know. But like, and then I looked at my hands and I, I've never, it's not like I hallucinate on weed ever in my life, but I just smoked yeah. so much ever for the first time. I had sensory overload and my hands looked like they were like five times the size. And <laughs> I was like, if my, if my brain doesn't tell my foot, to go to gas, the cops are gonna pull me over, I'm gonna go to jail. And I remember I had to 
get my hand, I pry it off the wheel, put it under my leg, lift my leg up with my arm, and put no. my dead no. leg on the gas. And I push down oh. with my hand, and I put on the blinker, and I just made a left turn and parked immediately on the right side of the road. Good. So okay. I maybe okay. drove like maybe like less than 50 feet, and I parked, and the cops went straight. Wow. And I shut the car off. I put it in park. And I said, I got to stay here until I feel my normal self again, right? Yeah. And it was, it was at the bottom of the hill that my college was on. And to the right of me was all woods, right? And I sat there for like, again, it felt like, it felt like <laughs> maybe like four hours. <laughs> I think I was yeah. there for about, I was probably there for about two, two hours. I sat alone with the car off in park in that spot for about two hours and it felt like four or five and then i i wasn't even like sober i was still high and but i started to get nervous that there was a murderer in the woods that was going to come out and just smash his arm through the glass of the car and just like just choke me out or something we're just accepting of it I started to like get nervous. Then I was like, we played the whole game where I was like talking to myself, like, what are you even nervous about? Like, there's no one gonna come get you. <laughs> <laughs> you and about? then, and then I was like, then I thought I heard something. <laughs> and then I was like, then I was like, felt like I couldn't cup. I felt like I couldn't have tw like uh, 24 seven surveillance of a 360 degree angle. I remember like thinking very hard, like no matter where I look, I'm compromising another angle. <laughs> right? So, you know, remember, remember, in, you remember in Stand By Me when they, they all had yeah. to take watch and they went back to back to back with the gun? Do you remember that? In the woods? No, I don't. Uh-uh. Oh, man. This, I don't remember that. There's a scene in Stand, Stand By Me where they're, they're going to stay overnight in the woods and they're scared out of their minds. And so they take shifts. But like Jerry O'Connell, the, like the heavier set kid at the time, he was like so fucking nervous and they all went back to back. Anyway, I started to feel like no matter how much I would look every way, I wouldn't be able to avoid a sneak Complete murderous attack. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hmm? At least and um, over. this was before. God damn! It was before I had a cell phone. This was before cell phone. So I drove. I started the car again, Why? and I just because I I couldn't stay there. I was positive I was uh, yeah, going to get murdered. It's I worth, was it's worth positive. not being murdered over. Yeah. Yes. Yes. By the way, I've never driven high again just, in my life. Just the radio time. or no? No, because my car only my car only had AM. Um, so I didn't have a radio. <laughs> no joke. Um, I used to, um, I used to have a boom box in the front seat with a CD player and just play CDs on a boom box in the car. <laughs> <That's illegal. laughs> I, I delivered pizza that way. Um, so I, uh, drove to my girlfriend's house at the time who lived about, yeah. About five minutes from where I was. So I mustered the energy to go there, like to, the courage to go there. And I got there. And at this point, um, again, first night high ever. At this point, the n neurotic part of it had given way to giggles and complete hunger. And oh, right. I remember I, I, I knocked on her door. She, of course, at home with her parents. And she came and opened the door. And it was probably like one in the morning or whatever it was and uh her brother opened the door and he was like a year older than me and he's like oh i'll go get her i'll go get her and then she came to the door and she's like what are you what are you doing and i was like nothing i just got off work because i used to deliver pizza and she goes oh okay and she goes your eyes are so bloodshot and i i don't know why because it was the first time because the first time i ever did this so i was like nervous to i guess i was still too high so i was nervous to admit to her that i smoked weed my own girlfriend for some reason because we never did it before. So then I was You're just like, high, oh, so I work paranoid about everything. I'm, yeah, I guess I still, I'm still like paranoid enough to not want to tell her, not paranoid that I was gonna get murdered. And then I, um, I told her, oh, I just worked all day and I had school. And I'm just 
I'm so tired. And she's like, oh, okay. And then I, she had, I came in the house because we had, we were very close. Our families are very close. So I was there. I would like, you know, sleep over there, you know, like, you know, you know, in our couch or whatever like that, you know? Yeah. So, um, I went inside and I remember just being like, I'm so hungry. And I, I remember I ate two bagels and like five bowls of cereal. And I just was like, I didn't eat all day. And I just, I was laughing my ass off. I'm just so hungry. Come on, please help me. And she never knew. She never like suspected it. She just thought I was wow. tired and in a great mood and hungry. Yeah. That is also like the everything's gone with the wind is the food version of that is the same shit. Where you're like, this is the best yes. burger I've ever had. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's yes. too bad that goes away. And again, I I didn't I know it goes away. It sucks. It sucks. Yeah, you could get away with it though. Like if you could get it back though, because um, because just because during quarantine I was like I'll smoke a little more or whatever, and then I um and then I was like I'm smoking too much, so I yeah. stopped for three months. So you get your fu- fucking fun back. Yeah, I was just like I'm just gonna stop for a while, and then I'll just like you know, because I got into it was like too easy because we were, I didn't leave the house. That was when like no one was even leaving the house. Oh yeah. And I was like really, I was like actually really nervous too, and I had a lot of anxiety and stuff. So it was very actually helpful. And then um, I quit for like three months, and then I I did yeah. it again, and I was like back to very close to to zero again, like square one. Like I remember, I didn't realize that I was gonna have lost that much tolerance. That's which the by best. the way, I never even knew there was a weed tolerance. And my whole life, my friends had smoked every day. I was like. Um, how do they do this? Because I, because if I smoked even a little bit, I wouldn't be able to function. And I just didn't understand. I just yeah, thought yeah, I, good. I just thought it, I wasn't cut out for it. Right. <clears throat> and it wasn't until this quarantine that I realized that my tolerance was building. And I, it, I was like, it was like a light bulb went off. I'm like, oh, that's and you don't see it happening it. too. It's just it, like you just need a little more, a little no. more, a little more. Then all of a sudden you're doing fucking lighting up torches and doing dabs in the middle of the fucking park. Yeah, and that's how inexperienced I was as as of three years ago. I had no idea about tolerance. Wow. So it was it was actually a full surprise to me, full shock. And then by like the time I stopped, dude, I could do like a 50 milligram ed- edible and smoke like three joints in a night. <laughs> it was too much. <laughs> it was too much. By the way, that's that's how me and Metzger are convinced that Philip Seymour Hoffman died. It's because he took time off heroin. Same thing as taking off time off weed. And then he went back to his old dosage. He went right back to his old dosage. And his heart was like, well, I don't know how to do this anymore. Well, I remember when I went to smoke again for the first time after three months, I yeah. misjudged um, how low my tolerance <laughs> might have gotten. And so I just opened by smoking a full joint. Yeah. And oh, yeah. He, it, he was, it, was, it was reminiscent of the edibles. It was like I, I laid on the couch for like first time. three hours without moving. Damn. Yeah, from one joint. <laughs> I, miss, I miss getting that high. I really do. I know. It's so fun sometimes. Do you think you could... What, does that happen with you after Sober October? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is that what yeah, happens? Yeah, I would get high after that for sure. Well, no. Yeah, yeah. At least for a little bit. For a month, yeah. That's got to yeah, be your best you high so of the year, no? so ripped. But I remember the first, yeah. one, of the, one of the, maybe both times in Sober October, I just got so drunk and high. And one time I took acid too, like just everything in one night. Anyway, <laughs> say, oh, great talk to you. I just wanted to get you on the record as whether or not you're a pothead. So. I don't even know what we covered, to tell you the truth. That's the episode, everybody. What'd you think? I fucking loved it. Make sure. Make sure. Oh, here's if you're a real stoner and you use one of these tie packs. Um, after you put it out, like you close the lid and it, the smoke goes and then puts takes away all the oxygen. So it takes away. So it puts out the joint. Real stoners, as soon as the joint's out, you get your, your last hit of smoke. What was your favorite part? Guys, in the comment section of today's YouTube uh, page, youtube.com slash Shafir, please leave us a comment. Did it work? Let's try again. Fuck no. God damn it, it's raining.
Ladies and gentlemen, that's the episode. Ah, oh, shit. I hope you had a good time. I did too. Thank you very much, Dan Soder, Tony Hinchcliffe, Adrian Apolucci, Sal Volcano, Duncan Trussell, Steve Renazzisi, Mark Norman, and yes, even Kurt Metzger for taking time out of his day, regardless if he got fucked up. I'm fucking with him. That guy's super interesting. Uh, if you ever do see him and you smoke him up and get high, ask him the story. Ask him to say, hey, tell me how Gavin McInnes is somehow related in pop culture to Lena Dunham. Ari said you told him something really interesting, and he'd fucking like to know. Oh, shit. All right. I think that's it. I think that's it. Oh, so as I said, leave that in your comments, your best fucking weed stories, the first time you remember getting high, the, the friends you smoked with, just fun stuff. F weirdest places to smoke weed. And on 420, on April 20th, in honor of those black, uh, proud black members of the Baptist Church in Tulsa who somehow outsmarted the evil KKK that day and ended racism forever. Um, oh shit, what was I even talking about? What was I even fucking talking about? Oh yeah, so leave in your comments um, that stuff. And my Patreon, patreon.com slash Ari Shafir, please sign up. I could use it. I'm going broke very rapidly. Um, I'll talk about them. I'll, I'll whip them out. It's just a bunch of them. Maybe even multiple episodes. At least some good ones. So I'll fuck with them and read them and talk about them. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Please hit subscribe. YouTube, let's go. We're done. And your RSS feed, we're done. Go smoke weed. Go celebrate. By the way, Shroomfest is coming. I forgot when it is. Okay, Shroomfest this year is August 21st, 22nd, 23rd. I quickly looked it up with a seamless fucking edit. Um, Shroomfest 20, 2022 is June 11th through the 13th. So, you know, if you had someone die of COVID, like right before Shroomfest this year, like right before, then maybe skip it uh, and go next year. But that's the dates. I'll just give you the next five years right now. Write it down right now. 2021, August 21st, 22nd, 23rd. All over the world. How do you celebrate Shroom Fest? You just eat mushrooms. 2022, June 11th through the 13th. 2023, July 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. Shroom Fest 2024 is July 20th, 21st, and 22nd. And the last one, not the last one, but Shroom Fest 2025 is August 9th through 11th. So fucking find some shrooms now and get ready for it. Celebrate however you want. Guys, it's not, the, it's not right for this episode. None of this is right for this episode. It's for weed. Weed is mushroom's best friend. Dude, if you're doing mushrooms and you don't have a joint or maybe five with you, because you want to be able to smoke some, and then, ah, oh, I lost it. Who cares? I'm telling you, dude, those tight packs. Weed is mushroom's best friend. And a really, quite a good friend from college is Molly also. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, Ari Shavir's Capitank, episode 420, A Pot of Weed. Goodbye.